My name is Tank. <laughs> Man, I'm Jay Valentine. <laughs> and this is the Only Money Podcast. <laughs> you know nothing about writing songs. <laughs> you know nothing about writing hits. <laughs> you are not from the Caribbean. <laughs> You're not either. You are, I am not either. But <laughs> I have been there. <laughs> we have today on the pod one of the most electrifying talents that we've ever seen <laughs> he writes it he sings it he feels it deeply in the building Deron Thomas is in the building uh, yeah. yo yes, yes, I love sir. it I love it yes sir yeah, I just, you what's know, up guys I you, feel it you had I to love put it. some flair on it yeah, you know what I'm saying you got nice it up I got nice it up <laughs> oh my don't don't yes <laughs> yes encourage me yes <laughs> You're from Virgin Islands, right? Yeah, St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Home of Tim Duncan. Yeah. Wow. Tim Duncan is from St. Croix, but a good friend. Big up to Tim Duncan. That's why um, his team was my favorite. The Spurs is my favorite team until he left. We didn't. We don't have a team. We had one player, Tim Duncan, so I was a Spurs fan. One until, player? Yeah. Tim Duncan. Uh, yeah. We had one superstar player, which is Tim Duncan from St. Croix, and I was a Spurs fan until he retired. Wow. And now I'm just like, you know, basketball is on the TV. Give me, give me, give me. That was very coming to America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good for this on TV. Touchdown. <laughs> Shit. Yo. Yo. Yes. Yes. This is halftime. I know. Face. My favorite part. In the face. <laughs> okay, calm down. You're going to spill your beverages. Um, <laughs> hey, that was No good, more though. bowing. That was good. That was, that was good. good. Yeah. Give me, give me. Because we have so much to unpack, bro. You've done so much mm. marvelous work in this in this music industry. Like Thank you. You are you are well respected. Yeah. And 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 very much called upon. Oh man. To deliver. <laughs> yeah. Like you're one of the guys that's like you know for 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 record companies are saying we need it. Yeah. No, he's a designated hitter. Designated. I don't know if you hitter. watch baseball. No, no. Okay, I, 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 ain't a, I ain't a sports person too much. Whatever, whatever. Okay. whatever. Okay. So a designated hitter is somebody that they put in baseball, they put in the game to get hits. They're like, okay, this guy, we need a hit right now. That's it. It's the DH. They only have it on one side of, for some weird reason. Mm -hmm. It's only in the American League. I don't think it's in the, uh, in the National League. But yep. this is what this guy is paid to do. That's it. We need a hit right now. You've been sitting on the bench the entire game. And when I put you in, I believe you're going to hit the ball. They've been working with other people yeah. for a year and a half. Yeah. And then they call. We got the body yeah. of work. Yeah. We need Tehran. Tehran. <laughs> you, you hear my accent? Tehran. <laughs> you, you niggas is cool. <laughs> we need Tehran. <laughs> oh, Come on. Designated through. hitter. Designated hitter. What was, give me growing up in the Virgin Islands. You and Timothy. Give me, me that. Me and my on, brother. Shout, shout out to Timothy. Shout too, out man. to my brother good Timothy, dude, my, one dude. of my favorite human beings in the world. I yes. love you if you're watching this. Yes. Um, growing up in St. Thomas, so we we started out, me and my brother started out living in a in a shack, which was the place that my mom was raised with her uh nine sisters and one brother. And then my mom my mom and my dad ended up staying there. So we lived there. And um my mom got really, really mad at my dad because she was mad, like, why am I still in this place? My childhood place. When you say Shaq, what do you mean by that? Describe that. You ever seen the Sorry Miss Jackson video by Outkast? Yes. Yes. That house. Oh. So, oh. you know, our door couldn't close. We had to tie it closed. The bathroom was outside with no lights. We had to take baths before 6 p.m. because it would go dark. Um, there was holes in the floor, so we had stray dogs or stray cats or, or animals just crawl inside the house. And, you know, my dad was a trash man, so he would get our beds from the trash can, but we'd never had... Uh, the bed spring or the headboard or we never had none of that we just had the mattress just the mattress you know what i'm saying but it had the little things in it so it would poke you oh, yeah. when you sleep you know yeah. what i'm saying so me and my brother would argue on which side <laughs> somebody would sleep you know and um you know me you know i'm i'm 40 now and i you know and m my brother and i shared a bed till i was about 27 years old 
you know what I mean? And that's a funny that's a funny story because I'm going to jump back, but we shared a bed cuz we got an apartment in Atlanta when we finally like got our own place, two bedroom, and we're in our bedrooms yelling at each other like, "Yo, what you doing? Man, I just watching that movie. What you doing?" <laughs> I, I texting some girl, my boy. This fuck feel weird, dog. Yeah. And I just went in my brother's room. And we we shared a bed to the point that our best friend lost his apartment and we let him stay in the other room. <laughs> we're not using that shit. Yeah, anyway. we're like, yo, bro, you could yo, you can come in, you can help pay bills too. Shit. Bring groceries in this month. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so we started out in the sh- shack. My mom was mad, you know, somewhat broke up with my, my dad. He was like, uh-uh, you got to get it together. You you know what I'm saying? We can't be living like this with our kids. And um, there used to be a project in St. Thomas called Dunu or Dunu Gut, right? Mm-hmm. And it's my aunt, my mom's sister, Natalie, lived up there with my cousin, Oshana, Kelly, and Kelly. So they lived in Dunu. So we went to stay in Dunu with my aunt. And I remember my dad coming to surprise us because, you know, him and my mom wasn't really messing with each other well. They, you know, they they got back and then, um, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm being rude you're good, on here. You're good, you're good. You're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> yeah, so um, they both, um, my my dad went to my mom was like, yo, I got a surprise for you, and I was like, hey, everybody, come on, and you know, so we got in the car and he drove us to where we grew up is a project in St. Thomas called Housing. The politically correct name is Oswald Harris Court. So he drove us to Housing, brought us in there, and St. Thomas apartments don't come with nothing in it. You know, like when we moved to the States and we had AC, we was like, y'all niggas rich. What do you mean by don't come with nothing? It just comes with walls, concrete walls. There's no fridge or stove or washer. Or or stove? No, it don't come with nothing in it. It's walls. You got to buy everything. So when we move- any, Anywhere you move, you have to have- and, I mean- All I'll the let, appliances with you. I want to say 90% wow. of the places. So when we moved in, and bruh, so we coming from the shack. Ain't no holes in the floor. Ain't no straight- you To know, you, and it's upgrade. To us? Yeah. Bruh. Moving on up. Hey, nigga, we, me and my- You know, we little too. We got to be like- Six or seven, seven and eight, just like, woo. <laughs> Look at these walls. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 we grew up there. So you, you know, so growing up in a project, but it's different, man, how important it is to have a dad. Cause we had our mom and our dad. So we in the hood now, and all our friends, you know, whose mom go to work and they dad ain't there, they they street niggas and they, yeah. you know, they're my walking with them, my little knife or, you know what I'm saying? They selling their little weed and shit. And we talking about 10, 11, 12 years old type sure. shit, right? You know, and um, me and my brother is just like, our dad got us into music. You know, nine years old, I remember watch, I, I remember seeing Criss Cross on TV because we started out as uh, backup dancers for a local hip hop group called uh, Roxanne and Katie or Cody. I always mess up the name, but it's Roxanne and mm-hmm. something. And we would be dancing because you know back then everybody in the 80s everybody was dancing and yeah, shit you yeah. know and we dancing and then next thing you know crisscross comes out and i'm screaming to the top of my lungs mommy daddy mom. they run in what happened i want to do that that right there that's what i want to do my dad's like okay my dad is like this is how i'm gonna get my sons out the projects they're gonna get out the projects doing that and he would just take us through the island performing, doing stuff, and, and you know, and so I end up writing because this dude used to write for us, this high school kid, right? Mm-hmm. And then he just was like, man, I don't want to do that no more. I want to be a solo artist and focus on myself. So my dad is like, y'all got to write your own songs and nobody could ever write a song for you ever again. Mm. He was like, oh, okay. Because he put y'all in a weird spot. Yeah, yeah he put and, y'all in a tough and spot. And so I started to get into it because I had an English teacher that introduced me to poetry and I just had a fascination with words rhyming. Man, I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And so, you know, I started writing songs. I brought a song to my dad. He's like, man, I'm telling you that. Well, it's like a poem, but I try to add melody. He was like, this is crazy. He's like, I'm telling you, you're amazing. And I remember writing my first song, right? My first song ever. I was 12 years old. I I, I still remember it. So it's like, um, 
fresher than fresh, hot half the press and any boy want to test me off to put him to the test. What kind of test that? A lyrical test. Lyrics from my mouth. Me not give you less. All the sexy woman they want to feel up my chest. Cause hey. it's me again. Yes, me come fresh. And nigga, I just thought I was the greatest thing that ever happened to music. Hey, this just sounded really great. Hey, you pulled just... up on me at 12 and I'm like, hey, what are you doing, Jamaican nigga? I don't even know the difference. Uh, I don't know he's from Virgin Island. Nigga, uh, look at that nigga go crazy. Great to me. I'm in. So on eat. the Philom Mitchell. Philom Mitchell. So yeah, you know, we, me and my brother, we a group. We going around. We doing shows. So and Pop's sing. the biggest fan. He's your he's your first super fan. He's a he's the first super fan. He's the greatest man that ever lived on this That's planet. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's the greatest yeah. human being I've ever met in my life. And and um, he's like, this is what you're gonna do. And he was like, yo, when you grow up, you're going to be writing songs with Babyface. You know, that's crazy. I had a crazy emotional moment because my dad had passed and then I wrote a song with Babyface and I called my brother crying. And I was wow. like, to, I said, Timothy, I'm not sad. I'm not sad. I'm just so happy. How did he know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he told me this when I was a little that, boy, like, mm -hmm. hey, Babyface, you know, singing. And I, he's like, oh, you going to see, you're going to be writing songs and singing with them. And he refused to let us compete with people from the Virgin Islands. Yo, my dad used to be like, yo, <laughs> my dad would be like, he was a gangster. Bro. He'd be like, yo, none of these fucking people ain't never make it. You can't compete with somebody that never do it. Your competition is the Jay-Z and them people on TV. If you ain't better than them, we ain't going to never leave this place. He used to make us rehearse two hours a day, you know what I'm saying, every day. So we couldn't go outside to play unless we make him stand up. Wow. So my dad would sit there, me and my brother would start singing, and he would be like, terrible. I'm your father and I love you. You can't make me move. How are you going to make a stranger move? I'm like. He wasn't lying. So <laughs> he's like, I need to see the show every time. So we keep getting intenser and intenser. And then he'll stand up. Yes, this is what I need. This is the only way you're going to do it. And so, you know, so if you ever had the opportunity to see me and my brother live, we're like, you know. I have. Oh, we're like I jumping beans. Exactly. Absolutely. And yeah. just as Off the walls. That's why. So, you know, not knowing that songwriting is a job, <clears throat> you know, so we became the biggest group in the Virgin Islands. But again, my dad is like, I've never seen nothing like this. People would ask us for autographs. Yo, we live in the projects. We're poor. I had my first job at 12. <laughs> I worked at a grocery store. I would bag groceries and get tips and bring home bread and cheese to help my mom, help my mom with a light bill. Like we was, we didn't have nothing. Right, so, survival. <clears throat> yeah, but bro, I remember I got my first job, like real job where I could get a paycheck at Foot Locker <laughs> and girl, and I got fired at Foot Locker because girls would come to Foot Locker and be like- That had seen you perform. Yeah, and be like, oh my God, can you give me an autograph, you know? Or back then they didn't have camera phones, bro. They'd have the little um, disposable cameras yeah. and be like, "Yo, let me take a picture with you in in the in you the uniform." Like uniform. Yeah. yeah, you got the referee. Yeah, and yeah. I'd referee be like, time. and my dad'd be like, "Bro, y'all are special. I've never seen nothing like that. Y'all, y'all ain't on TV. They 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 was they thought we were somebody, and um, we did that until so when we graduated mm -hmm. out of high school, our parents gave us the choice. They said if y'all go to college, as parents. We have to try to help y'all. We don't we don't know how, but we're gonna help y'all. Mm -hmm. But if y'all don't wanna go to college and y'all wanna go pursue y'all dream, y'all are men. And then you gotta figure it out. Mm. So it's oh, like shit. I'm like, I hated school. I was like, I could do whatever I want. Oh man. I got on the first thing smoking, told my brother, hey bet, we moved to Miami, baby. It was the cheapest plane ticket. So that was the closest. That's the closest place. So we got on a plane and we went to Miami. And um, I, my, my dad's half brother lived there, my uncle Trent, who passed. And um, he was in Florida. And um, he he had like a one bedroom condo. So he was like, man, I don't really have room for y'all. Y'all can stay as long as y'all want, but I know this ain't comfortable. And my cousin Oshana, that's the closest thing I have to a sister. My aunt Natalie from Dunu, her daughter. Mm -hmm. She was like, I would love for y'all to stay with me, but I got like female roommates. Mm. But, she, but her boyfriend at the time, his name was Jason Roberts. Jason was trying to start a record label and he was the biggest, biggest fan of me and my brother musically. So oh, he's like, shit. oh, they could stay with us. But he had five roommates. So we used to <laughs> so we used to sleep in his dining room on a blanket. But again, me and my brother, we like Y'all come from that. Bro, we come. <laughs> listen, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? We come from nothing, yeah. brother. You, yeah. This is this is as long as we got somewhere to sleep. 
And we stayed there. And um, we was like, yo, man, 10 months later, Miami wasn't working out. We was like, nothing ain't moving. We was like, yo, we, we can move to Atlanta or New York. We're like, all right. While saying that, a promoter from St. Thomas that lived in Atlanta, one of my dad's closest friends, his name is Perella, calls us on the phone and said, hey, yo, there's a big show in Atlanta that I'm trying to do. I'm going to pay you and your brother $250 and give you a hotel. We was like, okay, hung up the phone. I said, Timothy, we moving to Atlanta. <laughs> For 250 For the 250 For $250. Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah, we moving. What year is this? Um, this, is two, this is 01. We're wow. moving to Atlanta. We're moving to yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this 250 Because, cause, you know, uh, you know my, my, my high school sweetheart, who was my girlfriend at the time, was there. And um, so we go there. You know, she had a job and credit and shit, so she was a person that could, like, get an apartment. And, you know, and we, we had one night in a hotel and... $250. And we was like, yo, we got to figure out how to make money. But we was like, we're not going to get jobs. Are you crazy, bro? We came here to do music. So we found out in Atlanta, they be do doing talent shows and you can win. So we started to do talent shows. And then we won, no lie, we won every single talent show except for this one talent show, which to this day, I really feel like we got cheated, but it's all good. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's how it always <laughs> happens. always got to have a got cheated story. That's how it always happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They worked. It was politics. You know what I'm saying? Politics. But, <clears throat> it's all good. And um, what happened was we won so much that it was like, hey, guys, you guys can only be special guests. You can't compete no more. And we was like, bro, we only here for the money. Like, right. We, you know, none of these people don't practice like we practice. We practice every day. Like right. me, my brother and I, DJ, Benny, one of my best friends, Benny, we rehearsed every day. People yeah, be I like, kept what that you, same work ethic. No, bro, what possible, you rehearsing yeah. for? What do you mean? For a show? What show? Whenever one comes. Yes. We just would rehearse. So, bro, we got on stage. We would whoop everybody ass, and we would win, and we would win. No, we knew we was going to win. We were so confident, call it arrogance, whatever you want to call it. Before the show, we would be like, okay, so tonight we're going to win 250 Benny's light bill is 125 so we're going to let him get that. And Benny, you're going to let me and Timothy get the rest because we got to put some groceries in our refrigerator, and we're going to bust it down like that. We good with that? Hell yeah. Wow. We were going there. Yeah, we, yeah. we just, wow. you know, that's... And then they literally was like, oh, man, we love y'all, man, but y'all can't compete. People don't want to sign up no more because they like, anytime they see our name, they like, come on, bro. <laughs> We're not beating them. <laughs> We're not beating them. We can't oh, beat great. them. Yeah. And um, wow. so, you know, we going through the motions of what's not. So life start. you know, you know when real life happens, bro. My, mm. my, my, my high school sweetheart at the time, time gets pregnant. My brother went back to St. Thomas. We're like, this music shit ain't really going to work. I got to grow up. You know what I mean? And this is after how long? In Atlanta. How long, at, no, just how long have y'all been in America at this point? A couple of years? It's about four years. Mm -hmm. Four okay. years. Okay. About four years in or something like that. Um, I want to say it's about four years because... Um, no, 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 no. I'm lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's like... Um, 2001, two, my daughter's born in 2003. Okay. So my brother back in St. Thomas, you know, and I want to quit music. At this point, I'm like, everybody keeps telling me how good I am. They lying. And I don't like that. Mm. I wish they would tell me what I was doing wrong, because if they did, I would change it. Right. Mm. But, oh man, you're so awesome. I'm not awesome. I ain't making no money. People who are awesome are making money. Yeah. So I need to know what the problem is so I can fix it. And my manager, Ray, you know, y'all know Ray, right? Absolutely. Ray Daniel. So, shout out to Ray Daniel. Let me tell you how I met Ray. Ray. Ray and I have been friends for 19 years. This is the first time I ever met him. My daughter's mother is pregnant with my daughter. She ain't born yet. We got a two-bedroom apartment in the east side of Atlanta in a place called the Polo Club. And this dude named Michael, who once, I, I was broke, couldn't buy nothing for my daughter's mom, so I used to write her love songs. I still got a backpack full of songs that I just, I used to write love songs and she'll come home from work and I'll be singing and she'd be like, nigga, I don't want no fucking song. I want you to get a job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 enough no, 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 no. I mean, you know, at the time, keeping it all the way funky. The she need was, a, was different. Bro, she was 100% right too. Yeah. But wow, I'm just, yeah. but you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes you got to be stupid for your dream in order for it to work. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So. I'm in there writing <laughs> love songs or whatever. And Ray comes in and um, Michael says, yo, this the dude I was telling you about in the group with his brother. Remember, I, our artist name used to be Too Equip. He said, Too Equip. Ray said, oh yeah, man, I heard about y'all niggas, man. That shit y'all doing, whack it fuck. <laughs> that sounds just like Ray. In my house, the first time I ever met him within the first five minutes, I said, Michael says, 
yo, what the fuck are you doing, bro? I said, hold on. Why you think it's whack? He said, come on, bro. He started breaking shit down to me. I said, bro, can you tell me more about that? He's like, yeah. Michael was like, bro, I need you to bring him in the city tomorrow, man. I want him to write with me, bro. He's like, hey, man, he want me to drive you, but I ain't really got no gas like to be riding around. Ray broke too. I said, hey, nigga, yeah. I got an extra room. You can stay in. He said, bro, you just met me. I said, you the first person I ever met that I feel honest. Wow. Wow. That man, that, that man stayed in my house. He been my friend for 19 years since that day. Wow. No shit. That's how he became I would have never thought that's how you... Nah, he became no my way. friend because he told me what I needed to hear at the time. And I took it and it changed my life. That's like when Jay walked in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> when he first started managing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to burn all of that. <laughs> <laughs> All of it, <laughs> but it, the honesty, man, and, yep. and you being able to identify that really early yep. is is a gift in itself because you saved yourself, yeah, from all the bullshit. I yep. think great players got great coaches. Yeah, you have to have to, you know. So and vice versa. By the way, you gotta have coaches got great players. Phil Jackson don't get them six without a great play, and 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 they they work hand in hand. And the, yeah, it, it's it it goes back to the trust. And, the, and the like you established that line. That line was established very early. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. To, yo, you want to know what's so funny? To this day, I'll be in a studio with people, and they'll be like, "Oh, nigga, this is a smash," and I'll be like, "Hell yeah!" And I'll text it to Ray. Hey, Ray, what you think about this? He'll be like, "That shit hard." I come back, I'll be like, "Yeah, this shit hard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's <laughs> but he, he's also listening with different ears. Yeah. You know, but ears that you trust. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know? So, so when you go into the city, like, what's the first record you write? Like, what's the, what? What is what is the oh, most? Y'all, are y'all, most... y'all not going in as too equipped at this point. Y'all, you, he's moving you to, through the city as a writer now. No, 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 no. Ray, Ray, no, bro. Ray ain't even my manager. He's just my friend. Listen, I meet up with these guys named Bam and Ryan. They did the dilemma for Nelly and Kelly Rowan. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So you know they was having a session at this point in time, bro. My daughter, my daughter is about to be born. Well, no, she is born, and I'm shit scared, and I don't have nothing going on, and we about to lose our apartment, and her mama going to move back to St. Thomas, and it is all my fault, and I feel like the worst human being in the world, and Bam and Ryan is in there, and we come into the studio a couple of days, and then they like, yo, you know the guys that did Dilemma for Nelly and Kat? They in that room. Which room? I knock on the door. I, I open the door. That's rude to just burst into somebody's session. Yeah. But at this point in time, you don't know. I'm not rude. I'm desperate. Yeah. yeah, you know. But they don't know I'm desperate. They think I'm rude. You know what I mean? So I open the door. It's like, yo, bro. I'm like, I don't mean no disrespect, but I'm a songwriter. I think I'm really, really good. You know. And um, I would really like y'all to hear my songs. Yeah. You know. I'm like, well, I didn't say at that point I wasn't a songwriter. At that point in time, I was an artist, and I was like, yo, I sing and I rap and I do all kind of stuff, and I really want y'all to hear me. And it was like. All right, homie, like, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Ray, man, can you pretend like you're my manager and get them to, like... So Ray's like, hey, man, I'm telling you, bro, that nigga, you know? And that, and that, and at that time, I wasn't that good with turning my accent on and off. Mm-hmm. So at that time, I was like, hey, let me tell you something. Like, hey, I, I, I bought, like, fucking on my boy. I go rap on, I go sing on, I go do all kind of fuck, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, okay, whatever, homie. Like, yeah. you know? They come in the room. And um, I start freestyling, da, 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 da. He fought with me. He's like, yo, man, come back tomorrow and we we can work on some shit. I said, I'm just spending the night here. He's like, the studio about to close. <laughs> Swear to God. I said, cool, I'm going to just sleep out here. He said, bro, it's cold. I said, I ain't got nowhere to go. When you get here tomorrow, I'm going to be here waiting on you. Are you he said, are you fucking with me right now? I said, nigga, I swear to God on my daughter, nigga, when you come back tomorrow, I'm going to be the first person you see. I want it. He said, bro, hold on. He goes, he said, yo, come with me. Put me in his car, got me a hotel room for the first night. I was like, cool. And I'm like, next day, he's like, yo, bro, you really fire. I said, if you think I'm fire, bro, you really need to fuck with my brother. Me and my brother, we really them niggas. I'm good. But when me and that nigga together, it's different. It's different. Yeah. He said, word, brought my brother back up from St. Thomas to Atlanta. We started working, you know what I'm saying? 
And they're like, yo, whatever, whatever's going on, we're going to have to change that name, though. That name ain't it. Y'all want to be a group is cool, but you can't be too equipped. That's terrible. You know, like, okay, you know. Too hey. equipped. Me and I were like, hey, Yeah, man. I was waiting for you to tell me it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bro. Hey, listen, I get, it. I get it. It ain't terrible when you're six too and seven equipped. years old. Too but y'all equipped that to you was... Because we got, we, I mean, you, we got bit, we got, we, 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 we got popping with the yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. You true. know what I'm saying? You know, some people that see us in St. Thomas and still be like, I don't give a fuck what y'all change our name to. I too equipped son. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we end up having to go back to St. Thomas. My daughter is in St. Thomas with her mom. Me and my brother got it. You know, we get down there. My mom is like, y'all ain't just going to stay in my house and not, come on now. Y'all grown now. So we got to go get jobs, bro. So we working. We like, hey, bro, we going to save money to get and move back. back. We save money and we move back to Atlanta. Now we got the apartment where we end up sharing the bed for whatever. I work at Party City. My brother works at Kroger and Eckert's. My brother got two jobs. My brother's always been more responsible than me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when we were together, my brother was the responsible one. And I was the one who was like. Yo, fuck these niggas, bro. Let's go do this show. Let's go. I just, the music was, I was like, and nothing else matters. Let's go do this. And so um, we're there. And Ray ain't our manager yet. We have another manager. We end up not working with the manager anymore. And um, we end up being like, okay, Ray is going to manage us. Ray is, Ray is like, he never seen me and my brother perform. So he's managing another artist, signed to RCA. And he's like, hey, bro. Um. He's having this thing, and I want y'all to come. He wants y'all to come perform. We're like, okay, cool. You know, we've been doing shows. We've been in the city killing shit. We, mm -hmm. That's what we do. So it's an Atlanta show. They only got one mic. Ray's like, man, y'all don't have to do it. Ray is afraid because Ray's like, yo, man, these niggas going to get booed. They on some weird old Caribbean ass shit. But Ray, no, <laughs> but listen, but Ray loves us. He's just like, man, I don't know that shit. Bro, we're going to connect to that. Oh, nigga, we yeah. perform and we kill that shit. 9 a.m., Ray comes to our door. He said, listen. I ain't never seen no shit like that in my life. Nobody's ever going to tell us we can't do nothing. He said, we're going to make one fan a day. We start riding around Atlanta. Now, this is the song that got us into songwriting. This is the song that broke us through. It's a song that I wrote when I was in a, in, when I finished the seventh grade going into the eighth grade. It's a song called The Rain. During the hurricane in St. Thomas, I wrote a song and it's like, what's got me insane? Oh, is I can't stand the rain and it's hitting my, you know what I'm saying? Because it was a hur hurricane and the rain and the thunder and all yeah. this shit. And I wrote this song and me and my brother put it out on our second independent album back in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. Well, I rewrote the verses. Akon, who's Benny's DJ, you know what I'm saying? Which is a crazy story, but he's been, he's that, my, DJ. I mean, no, a, Benny, Benny is Akon's, Akon's DJ. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Benny is Akon DJ, who's my best friend, me and my brother's best friend. We all moved to the States together. Mm -hmm. We introduced Benny to Akon. Benny does not want to work with Akon. He's like, nah, nigga, we a group. We a team. Yeah. I said, nigga, we broke. If you blow up with Akon, you could come back and get us. He blew up with Akon. He came, he came back and back. made Akon sign us. That's why we signed to Akon, Benny. Wow. So, you know, oh, I was like, yeah, you know, that's why it's good to, you so know. are y'all Rock City at this point? Oh yeah, Have we come to St. Thomas and we change our name. We drop a mixtape called "Why We Ain't Got a Deal Yet" Volume One in the Virgin yeah, Islands. Yeah. yeah, and that's when that's when we got hot in the Virgin Islands because okay, when we started rapping, because we were a rap group, we started rapping like as kids and you know drinking Kool Aid with my no swear to God like rapping yeah. but like American and you yeah. know, and when we went back, we started rapping the way that we talk. And we start rapping against the government. Uh. And now all the hood niggas, now all the gangsters, like, we ain't street niggas, you know, but now all the hood niggas want to play our shit in the car. They love you. So everywhere, oh, nigga. Yeah. Now we them nick. now yeah. it's like, oh, oh, now y'all talking that shit. Because we talking about big man, we ain't get nothing. You know, if you know, if everybody lying and, you know, it's like, if some, wait, if everybody killing and nobody dying, then one of these models gonna lying. I ain't never sell crack in my life, sell smack in my life, sell a little mixtape, only one to me, you know, like, like, little, like, fuck like that. And we was talking that shit, like, from our perspective. That's how we got hot. So now we come back, we hot in St. Thomas. Nigga, we ain't thinking about songwriting, nigga. We think we gonna blow up as artists, nigga. Yeah. Nigga, Benny is like, yo, this song is fire, bro. I want to play it for Akon. We like, hey, why you want to play for Akon? I'm telling you, bro. He going to fuck with it. He plays the song for Akon. Akon loves it. Akon asks us for 15% of the publishing. Nigga, we broke. Ray is like, 
hey, nigga, we'll give you 15%. You're going to have to give us $5,000 like it was nothing. He said, hell yeah. Went to the back, wrote us a check. People does pay people five thousand dollars for songs. <laughs> nigga, I got a whole back. Nigga, <laughs> child, <laughs> I got a whole backpack. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. the fuck have yeah. we been doing, yeah, yeah, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How you many five thousands you got? Nigga, you I know got... how many songs we got, bro? You can have all these songs. And at that point in time, child support for my daughter is one hundred and seventy nine dollars, and I couldn't afford it. I remember just being like, "Yo, man, I just remember being low, like, bro." And my only goal in life was, by the time my daughter is five, she ain't gonna understand what being broke means. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was broke. But when my daughter is five, she's going to be like, what you mean your daddy can't buy you a Super, a Super Nintendo, a PlayStation? I don't give a fuck what it was out. Nigga, it could have been a spaceship. Yeah. Why your daddy can't buy you one? Because my yeah. daddy can't. That's, that's all. I got up every day, nigga. And, and now, you know, I'm trying to write songs. We're trying to get placements and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I remember going to the studio. I used to wear like the same clothes every day. I ain't got a haircut. Just bring my toothbrush. And Ray came to the studio one night and cursed me out. He's like, yo, man, you in here writing these sappy ass fucking songs, bro. We try, bro, you got to push yourself. You're so great, but you in here sulking and shit. You ain't going to get nowhere sulking, nigga. I'm like, damn, he right. So, you know, went home, you know what I'm saying? Ironed my clothes, you know, took a shower, fucking got me a haircut, tried to look as decent as possible. I'm like, okay, I felt good. Um, I had wrote 400 songs in the studio and we had only sold one. It was Music for Love. And Music for Love was like one of the last songs that I wrote. Well, I used to record myself. I didn't know how to fly a hook, so I had to sing the whole song down, every hook, every background, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, so we sold that. We got that. And then there's a thing, you know, then there's a pub deal thing. You know, we got a lawyer now and we're in the city. We're kind of moving up. You know, people, Akon and other people is hearing about us. And our lawyer comes and tells us, Yo, dog, I think I think y'all could get a pub deal, bro. Because Akon wants to sign us, and Little John wants to sign us, and Usher wants to sign us. Mm. As, all the same as, art, mm. as artists, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And and um, I'm like, bro, y'all got like a little buzz. I think y'all get like 75 shit. Real talk, maybe 125,000. Dollars? <laughs> <laughs> you serious, big man? Yeah. Yeah, dog, we need to do this pub deal for yeah. fast, my yeah. boy. You know what I'm saying? So now, yo, I never forget this, bro. In Atlanta, it's a restaurant called The Sundial. And me, Timothy, and Ray used to ride around Atlanta eating off the dollar menu because we didn't have nothing. And we wanted to eat at that restaurant so bad because something about that restaurant said you made it. It was up high, it was expensive, and it spinned around in a circle. And everybody took everybody, every nigga with money took all the bad bitches up there. Yeah. And we was like, man, we gonna get, we gonna be able to eat up there. And this lady, man, she worked for Hitco. And she was like, I wanna take y'all to dinner, man. Where y'all wanna go? We wanna go to the sundial, baby. The sundial, baby. And she took us to the sundial. And our lawyer was like, hey, just chill, you know what I'm saying? Relax. Ray said, I'll never negotiate against myself because when Akon gave us the five grand, he said, he said, when I said the number, he accepted it so much. If I chilled, he might have gave us more. Yeah, even more. So this lady, man, this lady sitting down and said, yo, man, I really want to sign the guys, man. I really love the vibe. I really like them, man. They're really incredible. I'm like, um, but man, I don't want, I don't want no big bidding war. I just want to get it done, man. I really want them over here. I think, I think, I think. It'll be a great fit. Well, like, cool. You know, Ray is like, well, what you thinking? Come on, Ray, man. You know, he's like, no, like we're here. We're talking. We're at the yeah. restaurant. She said, look, man, I'm going to just jump out the window one time so we could go, man. You know, my offer is $750,000. Me and my brother, I'm Nigga. kicking. Because <laughs> big, man, big man only wanted 125. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, and I'm a Pisces, so anybody know me know I'm emotional. It don't take too much to make my eyes start to get watered up. Right. So my eyes is watering. I'm keeping crying at the head. sundown. Oh, nigga, I ain't crying. My eyes, you know, I'm just like, you know, I'm it's holding it back, like, yo, my nigga, because I'm like, bro, y'all don't understand, man. My first, when my daughter, I was just like, yeah. yo, man, and I and I couldn't see her how I want. She was down there, and I couldn't see her how I want. And my father, that nigga is the most incredible dad in the world, and I just felt like if I ain't a good father. I'm disrespecting that man. Yeah. Mm. He was too good to me for me to not be too good to her. Yeah. Yeah. So nigga, she said that shit and I'm like, yo, Ray, say yes. Nigga, what, what are we doing? What are we waiting on? Yeah. Ray said, 
with the man with the calmest, coolest energy in history. This nigga says, he's like, man, I really appreciate that. But how we've been doing it as a team, we like to sit down and discuss everything before we make a decision. I'm like, no, the fuck we do. <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> what meetings were you in that I wasn't in? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Ah, nigga, that's great. We're going to go to the bathroom real quick because I got to talk to this nigga. What the fuck are you we, saying? Bro? Bro? <laughs> right. Hey. <laughs> hey, nigga. She's like, come on. She's like, you know, Ray, I respect that. I really like y'all. I hope y'all keep the same energy throughout your career. Please, man, get back to me ASAP. Cool. We on the elevator. We go down. We call our lawyer. Hey. You know how much this woman offered us? Based on the tone of y'all voice, it's probably more than I said. So she probably offered y'all like what? Two, 200, 175? Yeah. $750,000. He said, what? Do y'all trust me? <laughs> yeah. Don't talk to nobody else. And hang, hung up the phone. And then Ethiopia came to see us at a studio in Atlanta called the Artist Factory mm -hmm. and offered us a million dollars. And we was like... God damn. And then he was like, cool, we're going to go Ethiopia. But then somebody called and offered us $2 million. He was like, damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> at this point in time, I got like negative something dollars. Yeah. In the bank, you yeah. know, ended up at like negative $68 and negative 168 something stupid. And, and Ethiopia came and said, look, man, I can't get y'all $2 million. But I really feel if y'all come with me, I could teach y'all so much, man. And and y'all told me y'all want to be in the business for a long time. I really think y'all should come with me. She was like, I could do 1.5. We was like, cool. We went to Ethiopia. We got $1.5 million. A year later, we spent all the money. We owed $468,000 in back taxes. And then we was like, yo, nigga. Oh, shit. Come. Oh, shit. Oh, nigga. Oh, nigga, this is a really story ever. Yeah, Texas. Oh, nigga, I love, yo, man. Hey, man, we, we, we're twins. Yeah, man. <laughs> you and I are twins. You know, because people, you know what's so funny, bro? You know what they do, man? They tell all these young kids, like, hey, man, we're going to give you this astronomical amount of money, and they don't teach you what to do with it, what and they don't money. tell you what to do with it. Yeah. And we thought we was doing the right thing. Like, yo, you know, I mean, I was getting my daughter stuff. I made sure she was straight, and um, we bought our parents a house. Our parents was in the projects, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, our parents was in the projects, projects, like gunshots every night type shit. So yeah. it's like, yo, you know, my mama could be coming yeah. home from Straight work. Bullet. You know what I mean? And, you know, and at that point in time, my parents was in a rocky point. It was rocky, like relationship, super rocky. And we really thought it was like, yo, man, the best thing. So we surprised them, got him a house in the A. You know, oh y'all brought um, him to Atlanta too. Y'all oh, yeah, got him out of. Oh yeah, my parents. My, you know, my, well, my dad passed, but um, my mom, my you know, my parents both lived in Atlanta. My dad passed. My mom is still there. My mom with me right now. You know right. what I mean? And um, so what's the wildest thing you bought out of the one point five? I ain't gonna lie, bro. All I used to do is buy clothes. That's it. You just fucking it off. Oh, on nigga, the I would just go. No, nigga, yo, bro, I didn't go to the strip club. I didn't trick it off on bitches. I took. Guess what? I took one girl on a trip because they said when you get money, you got to fly a girl out. I flew that girl out, and guess what? That's Who my wife. Who says that? Who says that? That's my wife. That's your wife. She wasn't going to be my wife. I was trying to fuck, but we married her. <laughs> yeah, fuck all that. <laughs> you married her. Listen, listen. Sometimes the fly out, the fly out becomes long term hey listen the bit guess what my wife is the greatest decision that i've ever made in my life yeah outside of outside of making music and having children my yeah. wife is the greatest decision that i've ever made in my life i love that that's a fact yeah. so this is so nigga you know everybody's like oh nigga you got money y'all nigga come on nigga y'all ain't flying no bitches out and y'all from the islands nigga you gotta fly a bit to the whole team show it show it you that nigga in the spot nigga yeah, you, yeah. i'm like bruh hey man and I never forget, man. It was this girl, man, and I really, really liked. I really, really liked her, like mm -hmm. in the sense of like I was trying to get it. Like mm -hmm. I was like, she ain't giving me no play. And I called her, and I was like, Yo, man, I want to fly to St. Thomas. We're gonna stay at the Ritz Carlton. Da 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 da. She was like, I gotta work. I said, Okay, you don't like me. Okay, cool, I got it. <laughs> nah, you ain't gotta tell me no more. I, I, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought I just wasn't aggressive enough for shooting my shot, but so I called, who's my wife right now, and I said, Yo, we're going to St. Thomas. Da da da. She said, Give me a second. And she's like, cool. 
And she flew to St. Thomas with me. We hung out from that day to now. We've been together for like 16 years. Insane. Married for 13 years this December. Insane. Congratulations, bro. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? She yeah. knows that story, by the way. So, you know, ain't like, it's like, yeah, no, right. she, she's like, she's like, I didn't know I was your second choice later on. I'm like, you know what, though? But you was the best choice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, you know, I, it was incredible. So, anyway, we did, I did that. I flew her out and we, we did that trip. And, you know, um, I didn't learn how to drive until I was like 27, 28. Y'all don't, y'all don't drive on the islands? No, 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 no. We do drive on the islands. Me, I just always said when I grow up, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to have a driver, okay. so I ain't going to have to drive. To this day, I'm still not that good of a driver, and I really don't drive in that. So glad you told me that. No, 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 I drive, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nobody like to drive with me because I'm the nigga like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. And guess what's so if funny? you ever say ride with me, it's like, nah. no, no, no. I'd rather drive. I'd rather, I, I, I rather, I'd rather be in the, in the past. I want to like be on my phone and texting, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, oh no, even I'm, you know, like I always see niggas with their girls and they'd be like, hey, baby, give me the keys. Oh no, my wife would be like, that's not how, how our relationship works. <laughs> right. He, I'm going to drive him. Yeah, because he drive. ain't going to kill me. I'm going to drive <laughs> yeah. and I'm going to let him. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, great. you know. So, anyways, you know, we got our deal. We 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 did it. we did Universal. We did that. No, we, but you said y'all end up broke. Yeah, we end up broke. We listen. And when I use the word broke, time. I mean the broke. perfect segue, bro. Yeah, because this R and B money podcast is about both sides of the money. Yep. When you got it, and when you, you don't, don't. Oh, and when man. you fuck it up, and you try to get it back. Maybe you get it back, like. Come on, man. You got to, like you said, they don't tell us what to do with that. What to do with it. They don't, initially, they don't really, they don't warn us about the tax man. They don't warn us about the level of taxes now Mm -hmm. that you're at when you make that type of money. Oh, man. Oh, man. So you said you 400 down. 400 down, baby. In a year. I'm 400 down, baby. I don't know how I'm gonna get back up. Cause guess what? I don't even know what the fuck them niggas gave me that money in the and first place. And you unrecouped. I'm sure you unrecouped. Unrecouped Recoup from what? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't putting nothing out. Like what we what will we recoup from? <laughs> What's recouping? <laughs> you know? And then when we signed our deal, we signed an MDRC. So we would say mm-hmm. we end up being in the deal with Universal for nine years. Oh yeah, they're gonna M-D-R-C. keep you. D R C They're gonna you keep know? you. Oh no, no. And you wanna know what's so funny, man? You know. Uh, you know, you have all the artists and now all the information's online and they're like, oh man, don't do this and don't do that and don't do that. All the successful niggas signed shitty deals first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it allowed you. Not telling you to go out there and purposefully sign a shitty deal, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but don't beat yourself up if you sign one. I just had a conversation where I was Trying like, to be the best businessman. Unless you are like a cash money, uh, no limit, somebody who is putting out your own records, building your own company. Yeah. Artists who get a lot of money up front don't work. Most don't. Mm. Most don't. Most don't. Mm. This is very no, true. No, no, no. This is very true. The only ones who really work, who got like, be like, oh man, he got $3 million. That means he had something going on before the label. But chances are, yeah. people with a lot of money, oh nigga, you ain't going to make it. Mm. When they're like, I just want to let you know, L.A. Reid personally... <laughs> Flew yeah. to Australia and sat yeah. with his mom, yeah. and he is the biggest priority. Oh, he didn't nigga. let me leave the room. Oh, that nigga gonna break. <laughs> that mm. nigga gonna break. Too much money. Not just too much money, too many hands in the pot. When too many people care, that means you have too many opinions. The niggas at work are the people that actually get time to develop and grow, mm-hmm. and nobody don't care about you. You're in a corner with like three people, and only them care about you. Right. So there's not a lot of opinions. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Luke always tells me, um, Six, uh, success has many fathers and failure has none. Has none. Yeah. So when you ain't doing nothing, it's like ah, nigga, whatever, you know. And when you speak of Luke, uh-huh. you're speaking of he's speaking up. Oh, Doctor Luke. Yeah, yeah, like he's we Doctor Luke. I'm I mean, sorry, Doctor yeah, Luke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, Doctor Luke. The, yeah. Doctor the, the doctor, the good the doctor. doctor. Yeah, yeah, with all the hit records. Oh, yeah. all the hit. Records. Yeah, with all the hit. You know records. what I'm saying? Yeah. I was, I'm so happy and grateful that I got some of them hit records with them too. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, what gets you back? What gets me back? What gets you back? From 400 down. Man. You're back against the wall. Man, I'm going to tell y'all right now. Man, I used to write seven songs every single day at, at the Artist Factory. Seven a day? Seven a day for 365 days a year. Because I, I can't play sports. And my dad and my brother love sports. They always make sport references. And I'd be like, well, if Kobe shooting in the gym all day and all these other niggas doing that, well, this is what I'm going to do. Because I don't want nobody to be better than me. Hmm. I want to be the best. So I'm going to write songs every day. What if they ain't good? It don't matter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss so much shots that I'm going to start making more than I miss. Of course. So, you know, 
they used to fly. We signed the Interscope, right? But people used to fly us out to write songs because you know that's how we. So we artists, the label ain't really fucking with us, mm -hmm. but songwriters, we we kind of like got a little thing going. And me and my brothers in L.A. with Aaron Bayshuck, and we wrote a song for B.O.B. called Replay, hmm. right? And B.O.B., you know, he didn't really like it. And so we was like, we took it to Jimmy Iovine at Interscope, and we was like, yo, bro, you got a relationship with Apple, got my iPod stuck on Replay. I'm like, that'd be big. It could be a commercial. He was like, nah, y'all need a club song. I was like, okay. Me and my brother was like, hey, man, I think we should leave Interscope. That made y'all want to leave. Yeah, because I was like, we just don't think they understand who we trying to be. You know what I mean? But I love Jimmy Iovine. He's one of my favorite execs. That's no shot at Jimmy because mm -hmm. he taught me so much. I'm just saying. But us you're at, not going to always agree. Yeah, yeah. But us, yeah. But us as businessmen, I just, me and my brother and Ray was like, yo, man, I think we need to, we need to like. And at this point, y'all signed through Akon. Yeah, we signed to Akon. Mm -hmm. We need to get off the label. And we have hits and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And we, we chipping away at that. We chipping away at that building and paying it off. We doing our best. And oh, I had a business manager at the time, you know, when, when everything went crazy. And I go to my girlfriend, who's my wife now, and I say, Yo, man, um, the, uh, the, um, she's like, What's wrong? Man, spent all my money, man. I owe this in taxes, da 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 da. And she said, This whole time you was my boyfriend, you had a million dollars? Oh, shit. I said, Yeah. Why you ain't do this, 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 this? I said, How you know all of that? She's like, I just know it. I said, you know, at this time, she pregnant with our first kid. And I'm like, man, you should handle all my money. She was like, nah. You know, I'm like, shit, if you rob me, all you're going to do is take the money and take care of my kids. <laughs> sure, right, right. I just want, that's all I want. I just, all I ever wanted to do was make money to take care take of my care kids. Of babies, I don't yeah. do, I don't like cars. I don't care about none of that shit, bro. I just, you know, I like trips and shit. You like, but you like chains. You, you obviously oh like. man, this is a Virgin Islands <laughs> thing. I'll explain that to y'all. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, this is, so every kid from the Virgin Islands, you know, this is our thing. If you ever see these links, it's a Gucci link. This is the area code 340. Name of my company is 3400 with two zeros. Cause St. Thomas was small and when I was a little boy, I used to tell my dad, you think people in New York know we here because I know they here and it used to bother mm -hmm. me I used to be like where you from originally Milwaukee okay Milwaukee I'd be like oh man you think people in Milwaukee know that we here in St. Thomas I don't like the fact that they don't know I'm here I want them to know that I'm here maybe we should be a little bigger so I named my company 3400 because I was like you know I know I'm from <laughs> a small place but I'm doing big fucking things yeah I'm gonna add a zero to it I'm gonna add, add a, a zero, zero to it. it yeah you know what I'm saying so that's the that's where it comes from you know Okay, so back to what so we... So your girl, you, you, you're trying to get her to be your business manager. <laughs> She's like, man, I don't think that... I, I don't think... I was like, yeah. I called my business managers. I was like, yo. It's like, yo, she not your wife. I said, I don't give a fuck what she is. Give her control of all this shit. No, nah, we, can't, we can't do that. I said, okay, cool. I'm not going to work with y'all. Y'all just give me my money. What? Yeah, give me my money. Like, cool. I'm going to start a bank account. I'm like, hey, babe, you do it. My wife been handling my money since that day. I cannot let my wife... I feel <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. I, I cannot, feel. Hey, we listen, gonna edit listen. This part of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a person that go. I'm a person that knows my strengths, man. I'm and a, you go off your gut feeling is what I'm finding. Yeah, out. I go off of my gut, man. Yeah. You know, I go off of my gut. So you know, she started. She started like handling that. You know, we got our first kid, Nico. You know, what I'm saying, fat, my little fat Mac. Um, we get married, and you know. Again, so re, um, let me tell you how replay comes. So we, so Interscope don't want it. We want to get off of Interscope. We end up working with Sean Kingston, who we worked with before, because we mm -hmm. did a song with Sean Kingston called Take You There. Take mm -hmm. You There. Yeah. And um, Interscope is like, I mean, so we're like, oh, Sean, we played him replay. And um, he's like, oh, man, it's too slow. So cool. He didn't like it. But I is, is from the British Virgin Islands. He's our neighbor. Ah. I, me and my brother's the biggest group from the Virgin Islands. Ayas is like, bro, that's Rock City. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? So Ayas ends up getting replay, and um, they put it out. And me and my brother are like, man, I don't know. We want to put out this record. I don't, you know, I don't like how they made the the bead and flipped it or however they did it. And Ray is like, we ain't hot. The label ain't fucking with us. Nothing ain't going on. And we need something to pop off. Yeah. And they about to put money in it. We're like, whatever, Ray. 
Ray always, you know, Ray always talked me and my brother off a ledge. To this day, you know, like me and my brother will all, you know, we'll get Caribbean and you niggas real fast. Mm -hmm. Like, you know something? Yo, kiss our mother scunt, man. We need none of this fuck no more. Kiss to what? Kiss to what? Kiss our mother scunt. Mother scunt is basically your mother's cunt. <laughs> and it's a big curse word. But but it's it's the most popular curse word. Like how y'all say motherfucking in America. Like it's God the most popular. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> It's way more aggressive. It's way <laughs> more aggressive than motherfucker. No, somebody got to teach that to Samuel Jackson. Man, yo, what? yo, <laughs> so let me tell you something. Mother, mother, mother stunt is like, oh, is like, but it depends on the tone of my voice to where it's beef or it's endearment. Kaiko yeah. be like, yo, yeah. yo, you know this man, tank. That a smaller skunk could sing like fucking. Yeah, right, and that's right, another thing. Like the, right. in St. Thomas, the yeah. F word means everything. Right. Yeah. Like how you. But that's just, that's just black yeah. people everywhere though. We yeah. take everything and flip it. That exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oh, so you, shit. you know, your mother's cunt. So Ray God talks damn. us off the ledge. It comes out. It's number one in a whole gang of countries. Now that record was cracking. You know. And we end up getting um, two million dollars for that song. Hmm. Yeah. We're back. Be back, baby. Be back. <laughs> Be back, baby. Be back. So y'all got the one. No, 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 no. Don't move on. Don't move on. Look, it, this camera on me. That's yeah, your camera. That's your camera. We back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we back, baby. Love we that. back, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The lights ain't going off. Everybody good. Yeah. And now, from this point on, we like, okay, now, let's pace ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You learned your lesson. Let's pace ourselves. You know? We, we plan on being here for a long time. We've been there for a long time. We, we was like, yo, relax. We plan on being here for a long time. You know what I mean? And after that, I want to say, we we end up getting out of Interscope. Ray comes to me and he said, yo, man, I think y'all should I think y'all should stop trying to be artists. I'm like, damn, what do you mean? He's like, if we get hot at songwriting, they're going to want to give us whatever we want. Mm -hmm. But we got to be hot mm -hmm. at something. Yeah. I'm like, man, that actually makes sense, Ray. Yeah. Again, man, Ray's a great coach, brother. So y'all <laughs> you know? so yeah. go full throttle on into oh, songwriting. Yeah. Nigga, all the way in. And um, we write a song. Let me see, what are the songs? We Can't Stop, 23, Pour It Up, all of the, all at the same, all around the same exact time. <laughs> pour it up, pour it up. My God. Yeah, we Nigga, can't no, stop no, no. for Miley. Time, 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 time Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, time let's time do that. I remember. I was at, uh, I want to say Greystone. Mm, you could have been. Could have been a great day. I think I was at Greystone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could have been that place. And that motherfucking beat dropped, and it said, part up, part up. I said, oh, my God. What the <laughs> fuck is that? So I have Insane. a bunch. So so the way that I look at music, I have a bunch of theories. And I wrote, and when I did pour it up, the, the, the problem that I had with music is that whenever women, whenever female songs came on, men left the dance floor. And it bothered me. Mm. Like a girl song would come on and dudes would be yeah, like, okay, I, I, this ain't I, for yeah. us. And I was like, I want to say something that, you know, because I feel like the new independent woman is not like, I got my own money and right. that shit, you know, yeah. they've been having that. She passed that. Women want to say exactly what we said. So yeah. I was like, I want to write a song for a man and have a girl say it because as a man, I'm going to sing along with her. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And um, so this is a controversial thing that I'm about to say, but I've never liked Bridges. Hmm. I never wanted to write bridges. Huh. I, I don't like bridges. I don't want them in my song. And um, if you realize that Pour It Up has two verses, because in the Caribbean, if you listen to dancehall music, it's two verses and then the first verse repeats. Yeah, yeah. They don't yeah, do yeah. bridges. Yeah. That's my culture. Yeah. And um, Neo and Sean Garrett and Jonte and um, The Dream, they was just whooping my ass. I couldn't beat them. Yeah. They were incredible. And I just was like, how do they do that? And I was like, the only thing that these niggas can't outdo me by is being Caribbean. Being Caribbean. And, and if I could if I, if I could bring music to my culture, just bridge that gap. I'm just gonna whoop little. all their ass back. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was like, how am I gonna do that? And at that point in time I kept saying, yo, music is gonna be ratchet. He was like, What? I said, hip hop is the new rock and roll. And hip hop is gonna be the new pop music. And if I can pull it into my culture, mm -hmm. not not like dance all as far as the rhythm and stuff. Just mm -hmm. like the lyrics and the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I always, I always, always. want to say yeah. crazy shit, right. and it'd be like, "Yo, man, we can't say that." You know, you got to find a clever way to say it. And I'm like, 
No, I used don't. to hate that. Term. Why? No, you, you gotta don't. find a clever way, man. <laughs> Fuck that. No, you don't. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to say that. So, yeah. so you know, um, I so for unapologetic for Rihanna, I, me and my brother, we wrote twenty eight songs. Poured up being a twenty eight song. Um, it was the last one. The last one. We can't stop was one of those songs, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it didn't it didn't fit where Rihanna was going. And and in hindsight, now that I hear it. It is. It was better for Miley than it was, you know, for Marie, let's yeah. say Rihanna. It was better for who? Uh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. You, you see how you throw him out? Yes, it's crazy. <laughs> y'all look, y'all look crazy, so funny, right? man. Yeah, so, so mm -hmm. you know, um, anybody I did, ever gave you two million for us? You know, go ahead, man. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh man, you know what I'm saying? God is good <laughs> all the time. All the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Um, and um, so I, so we, so I'm in Atlanta, and I, we can't stop. And 23. And um, Karen Kwok hears We Can't Stop and say, y'all want to fly y'all to L.A., you, Timothy, Mike Will to do some stuff for Rihanna. Rihanna don't want to do We Can't Stop. I'm like, damn, bro. And I done wrote so many songs for this girl. I'm like, man. And we out there writing. And then the ASCAP Awards was in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I went to the ASCAP Awards, me and my brother and um, Ray. And they were honoring Quincy Jones. Hmm. I've never met Quincy Jones in my life. I've only met him one time, and this is the time. I was outside on my phone. If anybody knows me, I'm usually in my phone texting on a game on Instagram or something. Quincy Jones walks up to me, and he said, Hey, young blood, how you doing? Man, let me tell you something. I'll take my shades off of this one. And he's, and I say, I, I, I'm, I'm good, um, Mr. Mr. Jones. Uh, how you doing? He said, I'm good, man. How, how's the songwriting coming? Fuck, Quincy Jones know me. But I'm like, it's the ASCAP Awards. Everybody here is a writer. Maybe that's what it is. I'm like, man, it's going good, man. You know, it's going good. He said, you want a secret to writing hits? Y yeah. Yeah. Fuck them verses, man. The people want hooks, man. Give the people hooks. Hooks, man. Hooks. <laughs> and I was like, hooks, man. thank you. Yeah. And he walks away. The conversation was over. I go to Timothy and Rand said, Quincy Jones just spoke to me. What? What did he say? He said, don't write no verses, just write hooks. And the next day I went to the studio, strip clubs and dollar bills. And I still got more money, Patron shots, can I get a refill? And I still got more money. I said, I got to repeat it all the time. All the time. Okay. It's like, why are you repeating that the whole song? Because Quincy Jones told me not to write no fucking right. verses. Versus. He told me to write hooks, nigga. Yeah. And it was random. And I look at it as a sign. So I have to do this yeah. this way. You know what's crazy? I was at that award show. Yeah, because he spoke. when he, uh, yeah. he spoke. And I always remember the term and I still use it. When it rains, get wet. Mm. Oh, man. I like that. I didn't remember that one. I was too busy thinking of what he told no, me. No, nigga, because he stopped that. you and talked to you. He yeah. talked to me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I remember a quote. He, he said, when it rains, get wet. Bruh, I love that. that man, but like I said, that man really told me that. Wow. So after we did it's it. It's a full hook. That record's a full hook. Yeah. You know, that record is a is a full chorus. And um, Miley Cyrus ended up getting a thing. And wait, so you played that for Miley first? Or wait, no, I that was that was, that was for Rihanna first. Okay, okay. And then it didn't go to Rihanna. It ended up going to Miley. Miley heard it. she loved it. it. Ended up going to Miley. And Dr. Luke did Wrecking Ball for Miley Cyrus. And Dr. Luke wanted Wrecking Ball to be the first single. And they was like, Nah, it's We Can't Stop. Who did We Can't Stop? Mike Will and Rock City. Who the fuck is Rock City? Luke, he's like, I don't know these guys. Yeah. How? I'm Dr. Luke. Yeah. Dr. Luke. How are they getting the first single? I'm supposed to have the first single. So he's like, I want to meet these guys. So oh, shit. we go to the Soho house and we go sit down with Luke. Me and my brother, Caribbean kids from the islands. We don't know who the fuck this white boy is. And at this point in time, with no disrespect, yeah. we don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, oh, okay. And Luke is like, Ray's like, yo, bruh, he does Katy Perry. He does all that. We's like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. You respect my boy. <laughs> hey man, that's so great. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. Uh, you no, know, respect my boy. Respect my, oh respect my, my boy. That's very that, disrespectful when I said that. No, 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 no. We didn't mean it in a disrespect. Yeah, no, we were just like, that. Fuck we that. were just like, okay, okay, okay. Respect oh yeah, my boy. respect yeah. my boy. Yeah. And um, we go and we start working with Luke. And um, we had a mutual friend called Groove from Atlanta. And um, Luke calls Groove and say, "Yeah, man, I'm working with these guys from Rock City, man. They're from they they live in Atlanta, like you." He's like, "What?" He said, "Nigga, 
oh, I know they out of here now. He's like, yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, Luke, I'm so happy you signed them. He's like, no, I'm not signing them. We're just writing songs. He said, writing songs for what? Like, you know, we're working on Becky G and, you know, my. He said, nah, bro, you need to do that artist shit, bro. By the way, we stopped being artists for like four years. Right. We just focused right. on writing. Right. Now the artist shit comes around. Luke comes, he says, hey, man, we're in the studio writing songs. He said, hey, man, I'm just curious. What would your music sound like if you did it with me? What do you mean? Like, you guys are artists, right? Yeah. If you made music with me, what would it sound like? Nigga, me and my brother's like, nigga, this is what we've been trying this to do our whole going, life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We go. We go, nigga. We start making music. Ray comes back trying to hear Katy Perry songs. Luke plays him eight Rock City songs. <laughs> Ray's like, What's, yo, man, I want to sign the guys, man. I got a label, man, over at Sony. Da, 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 da. We want to do this. He's like, oh, shit. Like, guys, like, Ray's like, what I tell you. Right. If you get hot at something, yeah. they're they going to come for everything. Yeah. come for everything. Yeah. So, like, cool. And um, so we do a whole album with Luke and Circuit. Shout out to my boy, Circuit. And um, we drop a hit called Locked Away with Adam Levine. Yeah. And, you know, it went number one. And, and, you know, we went on tour with Maroon 5. And hey. my and my whole life I wanted to be an artist. And then I went on tour and I was like, this is stupid. I'm cool. <laughs> he said, this, this is, is stupid. stupid. <laughs> I like going and doing shows back in the islands and performing and I was like, man, I don't want to be famous. I'm like, bro, I just want, you know, I just want to take my son to get ice cream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we was already making money. We was already successful. So I was like, what what am I missing in life? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was like, that was my dream when I was 18. I was 34. And everybody kept telling us, you're too old. What, why would y'all be doing music right now? Y'all, Why is why would Luke sign them? That's so dumb. You know what I'm saying? We dropped Locked Away and they was like, man, them niggas be writing them hits though. Yeah. Them, uh, Ain't that know, crazy? Yeah. Them niggas be writing them hits. Ain't that though. crazy? L.A. Reid told me something when I sat in his office for the first time because I went to play my record, right? And I never forgot this. He said, whatever you do when you're in this business, never count out the talent. Ever. Never. He said, no matter what. He said, listen to me. If they talented, because everybody going to be like, they too old. Everybody going to be like, that last album flopped. Everybody going to be like, oh, man, they had this amount of record deals. Right. It might be different with you. If they talented, never count them out. Yeah. And so, you know, me and my brother, man, we really, you know, really talented. And we, we, put, we put out our album, What Dreams Are Made Of, in uh, 2014. And then, um, you know, shit, after that, everything kind of went crazy um with everything like luke luke got in like a whole crazy thing um with the with the kesha situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um pop radio said we're not playing no songs produced by him and me and my brother was like that man produced every single song in our whole album shit wow and I looked at it as a sign. I was like, this shit might not be what I was supposed to be right. doing, man. Right. Because that's a different politic. And we had to go sit our asses down again. And it was like, damn, bro. But we, but I was like, hey, you know what? None of y'all niggas can't say I can't do it. Right. right. I had a number one. And if I wanted to have a number one for myself again, I really believe I could do it tomorrow. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, now me and my brother's like, we trying to figure it out. My brother ain't really into songwriting as much as me. He'll write songs, but I'm more political. I'm more the guy that's like, you know what, Tank is being an asshole, but I'm going to come in here and play politics, finish the song. And my brother's like, yo, big man, what do you want to do something? I'm yeah. like, yo, you can't, yo, bro, we can't. It's me and my brother. Yeah, that's my brother. Absolutely. Yeah, my, bro, my, yeah. 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 my brother's like, yeah. yo, yeah. what wrong with you, big man? What you, what you trying to do? Cause we trying to make music, and you make it fuck. And I was like, and I don't want no oh, smoke. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, Timothy, nah, Tiran, meaning I fuck me, boy. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we gonna whoop his ass. So like, like, all that no, translation. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> like all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking my listen, I'm talking my brother off a ledge. Nigga, I I feel 24 I feel hours a day. Me and Bob. Man, what? Me and oh. Bobbathy. Well, yeah, yeah, Timothy and Bobbathy, bro. My nigga, you know, bibbity bobbity boop, nigga. That yeah. nigga's ready. And I just I just love this shit, man. This is my yeah. basketball court. You know, in my life, I never felt like I was too good at too many things. Man, but I just really felt like I was good at that. And I just started being with Luke all the time, letting him teach me. Like, yeah. Because I remember having poured up and all that and Luke saying, I mean, you're good, but you're not that good. Hmm. Biggest records in the world. And they had smashes. In yeah. my mind, he was like, I mean... And that man really taught me. That man really made me better. I really, res you know, I, it's, it's certain people in the music business that I would say, like, Luke made me better talent-wise, like, just hearing a hit, seeing a hit, yeah. understanding melody. Polo helped me with confidence. Like, mm -hmm. I, yo, shout out to Polo to Don. I always say I used to go hang with Polo, and Polo used to tell me I was the best songwriter, and I would be like, I mean, I think I'm good, but the best? He said, nigga, you're the best songwriter in the game right now. Nobody better than you. And he told me that every day for like two months, I would just go, and every day he'd see me, he said, nigga, you the best. You don't get it. And I'd be like, you know, <laughs> Polo, talk, Polo, you know, Polo, you know, Polo, Polo talk like black Elvis Presley. Yeah, you don't get it. I'm the greatest. Yeah. What I'm I trying agree. to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. You the best. Yeah. You're the best yeah. Yeah. Focus on this. Yeah. Yeah. Focus, on this. Yeah. <laughs> focus on you. He's like, Tron, you the best. Yeah. You don't get it. Because I'm the shit. Yeah. I'm the shit. I'm the shit. I know. I, I know, know what the best look like. I know it. Bruh. Yo. And he told me that all the time. And I ain't gonna lie to y'all, with Luke teaching me structure and science of songwriting and Polo telling me, you really that nigga? And my dad saying, I knew you was gonna be this person since, yeah. I knew you was gonna be this person when your mom named you T-Ron. I was like, one day I woke up and I really believed I was that nigga. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got busy. And I went, cra and I went, cra and I went, and I went crazy you know, but my first crazy failed. It didn't fail. That's a wrong term to use. I, so James Fauntleroy is, is like literally like one of my heroes. He, yeah. I've never said this to his face, but you know, but he's like one of my heroes because he did like all of Bruno and all of Justin JT, Timberlake. And yeah. I was like, man, I wish I could do that. Like a whole project with right. like a superstar. That would be so cool. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. I was like, I need to do that. I want to try it. So, you know, this swear to God, Super Dupes calls me on a Sunday. Super Dupes say, hey, Teron. I say, what going on, Super Dupes? Yo, me want to do a reggae album on Rihanna. And I was like, okay, cool. You already talked to Rock Nation? No, me never talked to nobody. I say, you talked to Rihanna? No. So how you going to do it? <laughs> me just feel like if me and you get in the studio and make the music, she I go make a reggae album. I say, you serious? I said, okay. Flew to Miami, started making reggae music. You know, Rock Nation's fly us out to London. One day Rihanna comes to the studio. We play like seven reggae songs. And Rihanna said, oh man, I might make a reggae album. I was like, I look at Super Dupes like, what the fuck? I said, yo. I said, nigga, God is with us. No yeah. shit. And then, you know, and then, you know, I don't know what went on or what happened, but... You know what I'm saying? And so years is going by and the album ain't coming out and everybody's telling me, Luke ain't got no songs on the radio. He ain't hot. Rihanna ain't putting music out. It's like three years. I've had a hit on the radio like every year consistently, at least one thing yeah. that's going. And they're like, why are, you, why are you working with Luke? Why you keep doing this? You need to be in the rooms with this person. You need to work with more people. You need to do more of this. And I'm like, I just believe in Luke, man. And yeah. I believe in what I'm trying to do. And I and I believe in what I'm doing over here. And I remember I was on my way for Paris and I had the longest layover in history. And my good old friend, man, shout out to Cece, told me, hey, Teron, come to the studio. And she was working at some random studio, bro, with J.R. Rodham, mm -hmm. pregnant. And um, I, we wrote a song called Level Up because I was in the club with Usher mm -hmm. and... Um, Throwing a lot of champagne around, yeah, man. I don't, I don't know, if, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if you're getting wet by all of it, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so I'm right. telling true stories. Cause, cause I'm I telling was in the club with Usher and my no, good no, friend Cece. Good Cece. 
CC is Sierra. Yeah. <laughs> In case you guys. No, did. my bad. My bad, <laughs> man. Rihanna, I'm telling you. CC, CC, the Doctor, he got the yeah, Polo. Abbreviations. I mean, you know he got what, abbreviations man, for names. Do your shit. Yeah. I'm telling y'all a true story. Yeah, it's totally different once you take your glasses. Oh man, this is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the true story, man. I'm in a studio. I'm in a, I'm in a club with Usher, and so I have this theory about about music. If you want to know what tempo it is, follow the drugs. Okay, so when when the Beatles were making fair. music, they were on LSD, and then it went into psychedelics, and then when cocaine came in, disco hit hard, and then it takes two to make a thing go right, right. and then crack came in, and it was boom boom cack boom 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 cack, yeah. and then when pop came back is when ecstasy was big and dance and all of that took over. But what happened is niggas start smoking weed, drinking lean, and popping perkies, which are downers, and so the tempo slowed down to like mm -hmm. sixty two beats a minute, mm -hmm. you know. So I 100%. was like, so I was like. It was this song that I heard in the club, fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up, fuck it up. Throw that ass in a circle. Mm -hmm. And they was mixing it with slow songs. And they was like, oh, no, it's halftime. I didn't know what that had meant. And I was like, Usher, this is the tempo. This is where the future is going. He's like, oh, you think? I was like, nigga, the tempo is coming back. So I get in with Sierra and I said, Sierra, I want us to flip this song. I'm with J.R. Rodham, the best flipper. He yeah, flips, he he's do. a flipper. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I got this idea and I want to flip this song and it got to be fast. She's like, Teron, Teron, you think it's too fast? I said, CC, bitches is doing coke in the club again. I'm telling you, <laughs> they ready to dance. Yeah. You know, and Sierra's like, Teron, you're so crazy. She thinks I'm insane, right? right? And I'm like, yo, so I'm like, yo, we're going to do this thing. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so we did the song, and um, <laughs> she was signed to Warner Brothers at the time, and then I go to Paris. And, you know, I'm in Paris and working on music and whatever, and Sierra comes and she's like, hey, man, Teron, you know, I'm leaving Warner. They didn't get the vision. I'm like, damn, man. Um, but, but, you know, they let her go with all her masters, and she's like, I think I'm going to put out this song. And she shot a video. I've never told this to Sierra. I swear to God, never told this to Sierra. She comes to LA and she comes to me and she shows me the video and I don't like it at all. I hate it with all my heart. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I, and right now I'm ice cold, I'm ice cold. I'm like, oh my God, they gonna say I'm whack. Everybody gonna say I'm whack. <laughs> they gonna say I'm whack. <laughs> they gonna say I'm whack. And Sierra is so excited and I believe in her so much because she has this thing that she says that when she says it, I don't fight her. She says, Teron, God told me. I swear, she, look, she said that to me about three or four times. And if Sierra tells me, Teron, God told me, I'm like, it's the one. Yeah. I don't care what I believe. If God said it to Cece, it's the one. Yeah. That's what I believe. And she said, Teron, God told me this is the way to do it. And I was like, you know what? That made me feel better. Swear. I was like, yo, that made me feel a little better. And she puts it out and it's out. And I do not want to read the comments. I'm so afraid. I'm like, please be good. Because I need something. God, I need something good right now. Because yeah. nothing is going good. And everybody's telling me I ain't good no more. And I'm falling off. And I need to work with other people and stop. No, dead serious, bro. And my brother calls me. T-Run. Yeah, what are you saying, Timo? You do that new Sierra song that level up, fuck? Y yeah. <laughs> My boy, that fuck nasty, my son. <laughs> you like it? He said, T-Run, that's the baddest tune ever, my boy. <laughs> you serious? He said, T-Run, that fuck out of here. I was like, y'all can't tell me shit. My brother told me he's out of here. So yeah. then I started reading the comments. I'm like, everybody likes it. I said, oh my God, this is crazy. So now while that's going on, there's a girl in Atlanta working on music, and Ray's like, yo, Teron, I'm at the house chilling in the bed with my wife. He's like, yo, Teron, it's this girl I want you to meet, bro. I think this girl is fire. You're going to love her. He's like, cool. I'll come to the studio. You introduce me to Lizzo. Hmm. And he, you know, he's like, yo, she got this song where she marrying herself. He shows me the Truth Hurts video. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I was like, yo. And then we went in the back and we tried to write a song. The worst song I've ever written in my life. And I'm like... This black girl is never gonna work with me ever again. <laughs> it is a rap. Yeah. And then she calls me. She was like, yo, man, I'm working on this album, man. I would like you to come out to LA and help me out. I would love to. Yeah. But I really thought I bombed. Like if yeah. that was an audition, nigga, right. I right. fucked it up. Right. And we go out to LA and you know, we do some songs and um 
with that being said, now Doja Cat been signed. Doja Cat was been signed to Luke from when Locked Away was out. Doja Cat was around. You know, she was just younger. So so peep game. Doja Cat puts out a song. <clears throat> Bitch, I'm a cow. Oh, that Macau, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, now the notoriety's going there. Now Luke and her is getting in the studio, and Luke plays me a song. I keep it juicy, juicy. I, yeah. you know, he yeah. plays me that song. I'm like, oh man, this girl is fire. He's like, yeah, man, I think she, you know, I think it's gonna be dope. So I'm in the studio with Yo Gotti, and I write a, I write this chorus for Gotti. I was like, yo, man, you and um, um, oh my God. What's what's the girl from Detroit? Please, sweetheart. Cash doll. Cash doll. Please don't text me and say or tweet me and say I'm a terrible person. I just couldn't remember off the top. So cash doll, I wanted cash doll to sing the hook. I love cash doll. I was like, man, I wanted her to sing this chorus. Play with my pussy, but don't play with my emotions. If you spend some money, that nigga I just might fuck you. Damn. Right? So I wrote this hook. Yo Gotti was like, man, that shit, you know, that shit hard, man, but I don't know if it fit the project. And Luke played for Doja, and Doja said, nigga, whoever wrote this, I want to meet them. Meets me, and I did another song with Doja on the first album called, That's My Shit, That's My yeah. Way, Do It Like That, and i repay you. So like we it's just nothing, though. Getting like on my nerves. nerves. No, oh, yo, just, wait. So You want to do something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yo, so nigga, so we do that, and then me and we, us and Lizzo, we working and so I'm working with Lizzo, I'm working with Doja, and um then Lizzo comes out. She's like gone. Going crazy. Doja comes out. She's going crazy. Gone. Well, you know, Warner Warner wants to get Luke in the studio with Sweetie. And sweet and Luke calls me and he's like, Yo T, you know, I'm gonna be working with this girl, Sweetie, man. You should come out, you should you should work with me. I was like, Hell fucking yeah, nigga, I fought with Sweetie, you know. And um, I was like, cool. I go, you know, everybody's like, I'm the Lizzo guy, you know. So I'm heating up. I'm not, I don't want to use the word hot, but I'm like, you know, they're like, okay, he, he, he might be cool. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lizzo record is which one? I did Juice for Lizzo. Uh -huh, and uh -huh, um, uh -huh. uh, okay, go ahead. Go, me and, and, what's another song? What's the name of the song? Tempo with Lizzo and okay. Missy. And then another song, Exactly How I Feel with Lizzo and Gucci Mane. And a song on an album called Lingerie. Yeah, you jumped out there. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, God is good. You yes. know? Yes. Um, so I um so now You go work with Sweetie. I go work with Sweetie. And um everybody got keeps saying, We don't want any samples. Because she had had so many sample records, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, She's from the Bay. The B I'm from St. Thomas. I'm from the Bay. No. Every, <laughs> so what I'm saying is every song don't cross the water. Mm -hmm. That one, everybody know that one. So I'm like, that's the biggest song from the Bay. That's the biggest song from the Bay. Why would we not use the biggest song from the Bay from a girl from the Bay? And Luke did the beat in two seconds. And then I'm writing all kind of shit, and it's booty as hell. <laughs> I'm like... And then we connect with my boy Lunch Money. Y'all know Lunch Money. Mm -hmm. And me and Lunch Money got it together. And then Sweetie came in and got it together because, again, Sweetie was like, she was telling me, this is how we talking to Bay and this is how it goes and this is what it got to be and da 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 And I was like, oh, this girl is fire. <laughs> she knows all fucking shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, and so tap. And then, but, but guess what? I did best friend first. So I did best friend before you did I did best friend before you yeah did I did best friend before I did top tap in, but I was like this song is gonna be fire for TikTok because girls gonna be with their right. homegirls and you know right. what I'm saying and it's gonna be cool. Well, we thought best friend was coming out next, but it didn't. Uh, back to the streets like la da di, and that came out and then best friend. But then we got Doja on best friend. Mm -hmm. And then so now so now best friend is going crazy. All this is going crazy. And now we're into Lizzo's new album. We're working on, you know, we're working on a new album and I'm I'm super excited. I'm I'm just grateful that I'm invited to the party. Now I'm like extremely in in in, in grateful mode. But no no no, let's 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 rewind. So COVID hits. This is what happened. This is what slows everything down. Mm -hmm. So 
and I get COVID really bad and I had to be hospitalized four times and I lo- you know I was like 195 pounds and then wow. I, no after COVID I was like 172 yeah. you know I, I was like so now I'm like bam oh my god I almost died from COVID this is crazy and and then um, my, my dad gets sick and you know on September 11th, my dad got diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And then on September 21st, he died. Wow. In 10 days. Nigga, listen to me, bro. Listen, right now in my life, none of it matters. I love all of y'all. I, I mean, not to get like deep on the cast and shit, yeah, but yeah. no, I love everybody. Uh, Cause I, don't, I just don't know. Cause guess what? My dad was going to this place and he said he gonna be back in 18 days. And I mean to tell y'all my nigga, I really thought that man was coming. And all my heart, I was like, my daddy gonna be back. Yeah. And he ain't come back. And now, because I don't know if I'm coming back, I might make y'all niggas uncomfortable. I love you. Yeah. I don't know if I know this nigga enough of him to say, but guess what? In case you ain't seen me the last time you saw me, at least you know I said I love you. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? In my yeah. mind, I just I just see it like that. So that happened. And then my wife's dad passed. And then we was like, God damn. And then my grandmother passed. And my 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 dad's brother, my uncle passed. We was like, yo, come on now. Yo, come on now. And then we, and then Drew and COVID and all that made the most money I ever made in my life. So it was like, wow. And it made yeah. me not care about money. So mm-hmm. with me, I want to, I want to make all my friends and everybody around me rich because I want people to understand how not important money is. And you can't tell a nigga that don't have nothing that it ain't See, important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yep. disrespectful. Yeah. Yep. You can't be rich and say money don't matter. Man, fuck you, my nigga. Yeah. That's what I would have said when I was broke. So I want to be like, yo, man, the people that I'm signing out and all that, I'm like, no, bro, I want nothing more than to help you get rich because I want you to realize that ain't really the true price. You feel me? So made a shitload of money. All of this is going on, going crazy. And I'm like, just, I'm going to bury myself in work. And Lizzo is like, we're going to work on an album. And I'm like, man, I needed that. I I needed it. I needed, uh, you know, and we did, some crazy, incredible songs. And while working with Lizzo, my publisher, Katie Welly at, at Sony, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, that. That's my partner. Man, I love her to death. If Katie got a flat tire and she called me right now, I'm going to tell y'all, hold on, let me help her change it. Yeah. She's incredible. She's the best. And um, she's like, yo, man, you know Chloe Bailey and her, her sister, you know, well, Chloe's like doing like a solo thing, man. And um, she's like working. And my wife is out here and I'm like, Okay, cool, you know, I'll go work with her. I mean, I like her and her sister, you know. And I get there and Chloe's like, yo, T, you know, she's like, hey, you know, nice to meet me. And I was like, yo, I did pour it out. She's like, oh, man, that's dope. She was like, yo, well, I got this beat and I want to I wanna talk shit on it, you know what I'm saying? I just want to have that energy. And she plays me the beat, booty so big, Lord, have mm-hmm. mercy. Yeah. I'm like, well, I keep flossing like I do. Well, I keep saucing like I do. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I was like, say he like that laffy taffy. He go stupid, call me daddy. He get, You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I was like, yo, I want to say quirky, crazy, crazy fucking things. And um, we we end up doing that. And then after that, they was like, you know, so now it's like, they like, oh, man, um, what's the name of the, what's the name of the song? They like, yo, we want y'all to do this writing thing for, for Cardi B. I'm like... Man, if Cardi B, you watching this, man, I love you, man. I want to write a song for you. Man, please. A yeah. hook. Yeah, please. Yeah. I do please. background vocals, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm a fan, bro. Yeah. So yeah. so they say we doing Cardi, nigga. You know, we, you know, and, and when, a lot of times we'll fly to Hawaii. Luke has his place in Hawaii and we go out there to work. Of course so, he does. Yeah, well, you know, so we go out <laughs> to the Hawaii house and we, and we work. And, yo, I'll never forget, bro. Luke, he said, bro, I got this idea. He's like, Teron, I think it'll be a hit. I was like, okay. He plays me the beat. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. He's like, you should say dick in the hook. Hmm. I said, why would I say that? I'm like, why would I say that? I wouldn't say that. He said, all the girls are saying pussy. If we say dick, it'll be big. I don't think I want to say that, Luke. I don't, I don't want to say dick <laughs> in a hook. It'll be big. <laughs> That's a cold way to say it, too. It'll be big. It'll be big. <laughs> Pause. And um, so in in, in 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 Hawaii, you know, I have my own little place. So I stay in this place, and it's called the Monkey Cottage. You know, just give me context. So I'm in my little Monkey Cottage, and I'm in there, and I'm playing the beat over and over. And I go on the internet, and I see, man, I love a nigga with big dick energy. Hmm. I was mm-hmm. like, that's how I'm gonna say dick. 
That's what I'm gonna say. I don't feel uncomfortable saying that. That's actually fire. So we get the idea in Hawaii, we come back, and I end up meeting with Lotto, and um, we try to get it to Cardi, and we don't get it to Cardi. Not not that she didn't like it. Mm -hmm. We never got. She never got to hear it. Mm -hmm. And um, we got it to Lotto, and so Lotto does it. You know, obviously uh, personalizing it to yeah. you know to Lotto. You know. Because, again, with me, how, how I do it, especially with a lot of the girls, I'm more like of a skeleton of of where I see it. Like, yo, this is what it should be, and this is why we're saying this and this, you know. And Lotto did it and, and, and killed that shit. So it 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 comes out. And and people don't necessarily believe in it. They don't think it's necessarily like a the... The, the runaway smash. The, the What you call it? Like the reviews or the talk? Uh -huh. Yeah. They're saying it's bad. You know, and and me and Luke is like, this shit fire. This shit gonna go. Well, it goes, and while it's going, Ricky Reed calls me. I'm at my house. I was in the studio already, which is a good thing because I've been making music with my son, my youngest son, right? So since he was like six, we like did a couple albums, and now he's 10. And we're just, he likes to be in the studio with me. So I'm just down there, and Ricky Reed is like, yo, Teron, I got this beat. I think it's incredible. Man, Tyrone, I ain't gonna lie. I think the album's great, but we need a smash. And I'm like, okay, you know. This beat, we going back and forth, fly me out uh, to LA. You know, L Lizzo has this fucking chorus and ideas, and I'm coming in and I'm like this and all that. And the last song that we made was about damn time. About damn time. It was about damn time, baby. And of the and music. It, yeah, my first Billboard number one in my life. Wait, I, Pour It Up didn't go number one? No. Pour It Up went number one on radio. I'm talking about Billboard chart. Yeah, I thought Pour It Up no. went number one. Mm -mm. No shit. Mm -mm. I had like I have like five pop radio number ones and urban radio and all yeah. you know, that. You know, that's great too. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm definitely grateful, but about damn time, you know. Across Liz, the board, number one. Man, I love Lizzo with all my heart, bro. Because you want to know the funny part, all the people I mentioned now, when you talk about Doja and Lizzo and and I say this, I've said this to them in their face, so I can say it now. They don't need me. You ever been with somebody be like, God damn, you so talented. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're like, nah, Teron, come to the studio tomorrow at two. And now, now I'm just like extremely grateful that I'm just invited in the room and, and you know, people want to hear my ideas. I remember when they didn't. I remember when I was too Caribbean. I remember when it was like, oh man, we don't want to hear no Jamaican music right now. We're trying to do R&B. And I'm like, oh no, nah, I, I, I can write that too. <laughs> we don't hear you know, Yeah. It's like, oh man, you know, yeah, you know, you from, you know, this ain't like island stuff, you know. We doing like hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I, I like rap. And for me, I always say, okay, in America, y'all got this thing that I call segregated radio. Y'all got urban radio and pop that radio. That's all kind of crazy shit. It's, it, yeah. I call it segregated radio. Yeah, we don't have that in St. Thomas. Just radio. Oh no, just music. Listen to me, Taylor Swift and Bob Marley and Barry Hammond and Tank. Whatever songs we like from y'all, they're gonna play on the same station. Yeah. So when I grew up, I just was like, if it's good, it's good, right? So when I moved here and I started making music, I remember working with. I remember we, me and Mike Will, we was working with No Doubt, and I'm talking to Gwen Stefani, and she tells me, "Oh yeah, those R and B melodies are so great," and I was like. I don't know what kind of melodies they are. I just thought it sounded good to this beat. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if it was an R&B melody or a reggae melody or I don't look at it like that. I was like, this melody sound good right, right here. And she was like, that's just going to be so cool and different for me. And I was like, cool. You know, I, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, I'm just figuring it out. So I think being from St. Thomas is like, at first, my, my biggest disadvantage and yeah. now... Your One of my greatest advantages. advantages. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. 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 You know, so I mean, but anybody knows me, I'm I'm a I's a real, real rock man. Like, if you know me, like you know I really from Virgin Islands. I really from Rock I Bon, I raise hoes and I went Charlotte, all of that. If y'all don't understand, I know anybody from St. Thomas is like that's my nigga right there. <laughs> I know. Yeah, 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 that was for them. That was for yeah. that was for them. So they they were like, That's my dad. Yeah. 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 
That's crazy. You know, so that and now and now we're here and you know, everybody's calling me to work and yo, bro, it's so funny. Usually usually when people are hot and I see people, they're like, Oh nigga, I'm that nigga right now. Right. I want to let y'all know the truth, man. I'm scared out of my fucking mind because I just don't want to go backwards. I yeah. just want to keep getting big. Yeah. I'm afraid because I don't know if I'm good at anything else. And I know that sometimes when you get to you, the higher you get, the only place you can go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a thing on the internet with um, Tom Hanks where he was like, I w back, what's something you wish you knew Younger, he was like, I wish that I knew that this too shall pass. He said, oh, everything is going bad in your life and it's fucked up? Guess what? This too shall pass. Oh my God, you killing in it? You on top of the world? Life is amazing? This, this too. too shall pass. You know? So in my own cynic mind where I should be like, this is my moment, I'm kind of like playing 20 points behind. You know, I uh, I did this thing yesterday with Republic and they was like, oh, man, you know, so I know you got a gang of plaques. I said, I never had any of my plaques. And they was like, what? I said, well, with no disrespect to people that have plaques, I always thought people had plaques when they retired. Hmm. Because if I just keep looking at the shit that I did, yep. I'm going to be like, I did this. Yeah. yeah, nigga. That's what you did yesterday, baby. What you doing tonight? I went through that for, <laughs> I, I went through that for yeah. a long time. Mm. I went through that for a long time where... I didn't want to be too celebratory. Yeah. Until they literally, my first plaque was given to me. I mean, they, the ones that I have have been given to me. I've never yeah, ordered a plaque. I've never, oh, that's what I've, I've never, I've never yeah, ordered a plaque. I've never I got a couple plaque. that was personally that were given, given to me. To, mm -hmm. That were given to me, but I think my first plaque that was given to me was um, was for Love Rants Up. Oh, it's a plan. And it was so much that went behind that record that I was like, okay, I'll, I'll oh, take bro. it. You know, but for the longest, I was just like, man, I don't want no plaques. If Ray's watching this right now, Ray and me have an argument about plaques all the time where he's like, yo, Toronto, I really think you should get plaques. And I'm like, yo, let me tell you something. My, my manager is like, I manage the most humble nigga in the game and it makes me so mad. Because I wish that- <laughs> Ray if, won't talk that shit. Because he's like, if, if, if he would just pipe up. And I was like- It's not true. Yeah. That, that, that ain't my energy. He was like, he's like- He's like, Teron, when you gonna buy a car? You know? So I was like, you know, I Me bought don't it. drive. Yeah, I don't drive. I bought <laughs> No, I had bought I had bought a Porsche and then I had it for a couple of years and then I gave it to my brother in law who became my assistant. I was like, yo, man, you know, bam, I, you know, you need a car, you can have it. And then I bought and then I was like, yo, you know what my dream car is? The the Raptor, the full Raptor, that truck, man. I'm from hey, the island, yeah. nigga. I bought it, I came home, my son was 16, just got his license. He said, Yo, that that dad, dad, that car is fire. But it would look so cool if a younger person was driving it. I said, you like this car? He said, I love it. Pull the keys out. I said, you can have it. He said, you going to give me the truck? I said, bro, I do all of this shit for you. Yeah. I get up every day. All of this is for you. I, I don't I don't really need, I really don't need that much, bro. Just make sure make sure they got internet so I can get Netflix and shit. Make sure wherever we, <laughs> listen, make, wherever you taking me in the world, make sure they got a movie theater. I'm dead serious. I want to go to the movies. You know what I'm saying? For anybody that knows me, y'all know I ain't never really been in a club. I don't go to the club. Not never been in a club. I don't really go to the club. Not because I don't like the party. Y'all niggas don't dance no more. Y'all just niggas want to stand on couches and look at other niggas. That ain't fun. I come from a place where we actually dance with girls. We grind <clears> on them. We hold on to them. Sweat. We actually act like I like them. And um, another thing too is I'm allergic to smoke. So hookahs and all that, it just yeah. it just fucks me up. So then yeah, I'd be in a club, I'd be like, yeah. I'd be like, damn. But only my brother, only my brother, I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, say we talking, I'd be like, yo man, guys, I ain't gonna lie, man. I gotta kinda y'all in here smoking. I I got I'm allergic to smoke. And my brother do this and blow smoke in my face. He's a punk. <laughs> 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 yo, and I'll be like, yo, man, listen, you know, so, so, you know, I'm just at this place now in my life where I just really want to sustain where I'm at. I want to grow. I want to be better. And I'm doing a lot more collaborations. I'm working with, I'm working with a lot of people new, old, because I just, I just feel like I look at what people went wrong and a lot of my heroes and a lot of people that I love, I feel like their biggest problem was they was like, I want to let you know that I did it. Hmm. I did it. I wrote this song. I'm that nigga. And I was like, I don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just want to take my you just wife. Want to do the work. I just want to take my wife to pretty places and my kids. We going, you know, I'm taking my kids on a I'm taking my family on a vacation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To a fly place for Christmas. Yeah. And yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like that's really my energy. That's what I want. So I'm like, bro, 
I don't care if we write a song together and you tell everybody you wrote it. Okay, cool. Guess what? My pers- my portion of the money is going to come to my address when it's supposed to be there. Absolutely. And that's all that matters to me. You know what I mean? I and and so I don't have no ego when I'm in a room with anybody and I'm willing to listen to anybody. I don't care how many hits I have. Now, I will bring my expertise when it's needed. For like, sure. okay. I th- I understand what you're trying to do, but if we want this to be a hit because I don't I don't do I don't like to do album cuts unless I'm doing the whole album. I feel like it's really disrespectful to call a man out of his house to try to get track thirteen on your record. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To Speak be like, it. yo, today I just feel like vibing. Don't fucking vibe with me. <laughs> don't vibe with me. Today we don't, I just feel like vibing. Yeah, today we just feel like vibing. Don't I do got that shit to me. To do. Yeah, yeah, my nigga. You flew me out here, bro. I left my wife and my kids, nigga. I want to make hit records with you. Yeah. That's what I'm here. You don't want to make hits, call me on hit day. You know what I'm saying? What you know? day is hit day? What day is hit day? And then I want to come. What day is hit day? Hit day. I know. I know today's. I know today's Tuesday. But, but what, what day, day is hit day? day? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Call like me that day. It's certain things that like like it, it just be. I, I be going crazy like when people be like, oh man, that's a good job. I don't like good job. I feel like good job is something your mama tell you when you came in second place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, mm. consolation. Good prize. job, yeah, baby. Participation. Nah, nigga, I want a great here. job. I yeah. want an incredible job. And if that's not it, then send me back to the drawing board again. There's no ego. I don't care, bro. You don't understand, bro. I write ten songs a day, five songs a day, twenty songs a day. Now, yeah. Oh man, you don't like it? Cool, bro. I write three, four songs to the same beat. That ain't it. Cool. Delete that song. Let's try another one. To the same beat. You like the beat, right? I just didn't nail the song. Yeah. The song ain't good. You don't feel it. Okay, bro, let's keep going. I want to win. I don't want... Listen, bro, I don't want to be right. I do not want to be right. I want to win. Some niggas just be like, ha, I told you so. Yeah, but we lost, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to be right. So what we got to do to win? That's I want to win shit. with you. <laughs> That's real shit. Niggas just want to be like, I'm correct. What did that get you? Right never got me nowhere. I don't want to know. I want to be like, hey, what do we need to do together as a collective? We're doing this together. And I just feel like at, with what I've learned throughout my years, we're working with records from everybody, from from you know, from the Lukes to the Maxes to the Mike Wills to, you know, to the to the dream, to the anybody that I've been around for for two seconds, I'm looking like, why he did that? How he did that? Oh man, he did that? Okay, cool. All right, let me try that when I go home. Let me work on that. Okay. I work with a young dude, and I'd be like, oh, man, this young nigga fire. He just don't know how to formulate his songs, but he got crazy melodies. Hey, hey, young dude, come in here with me. Do all that crazy shit you was doing. Okay, cool. Let me formulate it. Boop, boop, boop. This is how the song going to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, Because I feel like everybody, everybody has gifts and talents that they could bring to the table sometimes, you know, and everybody can't do everything. Like, every, everybody ain't T-Pain. That nigga T-Pain 100% or that nigga gonna make the beat, write the song, do the melody, sing it, do the backgrounds. Yo, my nigga, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. He, he, T-Pain record himself. Right. I can't engineer. I can't make beats. You know what I'm but saying? You know like, what you can do. I know what I can do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I feel like and I feel like when you get with people, the more collaborations you do, bro, the future of music, bro, anybody that wants to be in this shit for real and want to make real money and want to be successful... You need at least three, four, five niggas in the room with you. Not every time, but I'm telling you, bro. Look back at Thriller. Look back at all them records, bro. Them niggas had a gang. It was a bunch of names in them credits. Mm-hmm. It was a bass player. It was a, And sometimes the bass player didn't play what Quincy said. The bass player said, hey, guys, I got an idea. The trumpet player had an idea. You know, the person wrote the song, but Michael Jackson had a lyric change. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, you know, everybody right now, the big thing in music is like, ah, oh, man, these niggas ain't writing their own shit. And I'm like, guess what, man? Everybody get help. Yep. Everybody great that's help. Everybody. Helped. Every nigga in his little living room that ain't got on is doing it by itself. All the niggas popping got niggas like me in the room. Yeah. Absolutely. Every last one of them. Yeah. If, if they popping, and guess what? That don't mean we wrote their verses or nothing like that. But guess what? That don't mean that we didn't say, oh, man, that third line ain't that good. Change it. I think something people didn't realize in this industry because the person we put on the top of that mountain that I can do it all is Prince. Man. When Prince made that movie, Purple Rain, he showed you mm-hmm. sometimes you gotta let Wendy and Lisa Jealousy. do their shit. Damn right. And I'll take that song 
and it'll be great on me. I didn't write that one though. And he showed it for all the people that's been doing this, written, produced, yeah. scored, arranged by myself, by mm-hmm. my damn self. Mm-hmm. Prince in a movie yeah. showed you. I have some help. You know, a lot of people want to stroke their own ego. I remember riding in my car one time and I was mad at the music business and I felt like I wasn't being respected the right way. So I called Ray screaming, these niggas don't respect me, nigga. I'm one of the best. They don't fuck. You know, we've all had those moments. Mm -hmm. I'm being honest. And Ray let me talk for about about a 10, 15 minute rant. And then he said, you finished? I said, yeah. He said, turn the radio on. What? Turn the radio on. Turn the radio on. He said, is that hit on the radio playing right now? I said, yeah, what song is it? I wear Gucci, I wear Pelly at the same damn time. I never forget. He said, did you write that song? I said, nah. He said, then shut the fuck up. The music business don't need you. You need it. So listen, you could quit. You know you could quit music today, right? Another nigga don't. Not lose any steam. Nigga, they're going to find somebody else to listen to. It keeps going. So you know what? When I was able to realize that that day and take my ego out and look at every fucking moment as a privilege. Yeah. There's a difference with respect and disrespect. You're not going to disrespect me, and I'm going to stand up for myself and say we're not going to tolerate that, but right. we're not going to be in the room like, nigga, you don't understand. Understand what, bro? Okay. Yeah. Usher didn't get a hit from me this album. Somebody else gave him one. Oh, man. Lizzo didn't get a hit from me this album. Somebody. There are other people in this motherfucker that's good. Sure. You want to know what's so funny? Other people build houses, my nigga. <laughs> other yo there's other fast food restaurants outside of mcdonald's homeboy yeah. mm-hmm. okay y'all niggas ain't got no fries i'll go to chick-fil-a yeah so when you look at life like that and realize that and you look at it from a thing of privilege i don't walk in a room saying what can you give me what can you give me i come in a room and bro ask anybody how can i help how can i help yeah what do you think yeah Oh, man, Teron, I ain't going to lie, man. Right now, nigga, I ain't eight. Oh, you ain't eight, nigga? I don't care what nobody say, nigga. I'm successful. I'm, I'm rich. I'm happy. I'm married. I'm a dad. I'm the shit. And, nigga, if I'm in here and I know that you being hungry fucks up what we're doing, I will. If I can't post it, I'll be like, hey, nigga, I'll run up to the store and get you something. You ain't got to do that. Yes, I do. Yeah. Right. In Dolomite, that nigga said he'll get the sandwiches. He'll pick yeah. up the lights, nigga. This our shit. Ain't we writing this hit together? Right. You know what happens if it's a hit, nigga? We all eat. Mm-hmm. But if you ain't on your game because you ain't had a fucking sandwich, nigga, let me get you one. Yeah. Oh, nigga, I'm too big for that. I'm not too big for nothing. That's why I feel I'm big. Hmm. There you have it. There you have it. <laughs> what you got to say, brother? I've been trying to figure out what to ask him the whole time he's been running it down <laughs> and he's been knocking down my questions. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Every, no, 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 no. No, bro. This is your world. We and, bring people here yeah. to for them to have their opportunity to tell their side. Yeah. Period. Whatever that side is. To tell their to tell their side and to tell their journey. Mm-hmm. This has been your journey, brother, an yeah. amazing journey, bro, an and, amazing. journey. And you've allowed us to take this ride with you, yeah. as you've talked about how from going from A to B to Z. I've been like this, bro. We locked in with you, and yeah. it's and it's an amazing thing for you to be able to come here and still say, you know what? Through all of this, though, I'm just grateful, man, thankful. That's the key. I appreciate it. Yeah. Because everybody doesn't sit in that same type of space, especially at your level. You know what I mean? To be able to have that humility. Mm-hmm. I try to look. I, I remember when my son was a baby, and I try to look at uh, the world through a kid's eyes because I remember that we bought him presents, and he only wanted to play with the wrapping paper. And it was so, no, yeah. it was fascinating to him. Mm-hmm. It made I him know. so happy. <laughs> oh my God. And I looked at him, and I remember, and I looked at him, and I was like, I hope everything in life make me feel like that wrapping paper. Yeah. Because we're going to get old. And it's like last year I bought you a Louis belt, but now the Louis belt old. So now you want a Louis bag. Or now you want Louis shoes. It ain't enough. You're not satisfied. It ain't yeah. good. You need more. Yo, you bought the Rolls Royce, but now you got to drive the Ferrari. And it's not enough. And you don't feel. And I was like, I just always want to see the wrapping paper. Simplest thing. Yeah. Every That's day. great, bro. Yeah. yeah. That's great. As much as I can. Wow. Incredible. 
Nigga. Rapping paper. <laughs> the simple things. Where are you going? Oh, he's going to his keyboard. <laughs> oh, he's going to his keyboard. Top five. <laughs> Top five. <laughs> What's your... What's Tehran's top five, top five? <laughs> Your top five. Um, top five R&B artists. Top five top R&B artists. Top five. I'm still singing the song. <laughs> Tehran, let me cook. <laughs> R&B artists, your favorite, it's your world, yeah, your top five. Hmm. My top five favorite R&B artists of all time, okay. I was born in 82, so my top five, you know, but... Um, you were born in 82? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So coming in at number five, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna have to say this because I saw him live before he passed, and I didn't want to go to his concert, and my best friend made me go, and it's one of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life to this day. So I'm gonna say, like, number five is like Luther Vandross. <laughs> mm. Because I saw because I saw him live, yeah. before, you know, and then um, number four, I'm gonna say um, Mary J. Blige. Yeah, um, yeah, Mary J. Blige. That's a special woman. I got a t chance to meet her and work with her. The song never came out, but she don't understand like just what it meant. How yeah. you know, just yeah. like how excited. Um. So that's number four. Number three got to be Stevie Wonder. I just think he's not only one of the best R&B artists, he's one of the best songwriters ever because to my understanding, he was born blind and he just writes from a place of things that I've seen and I'm like, how does he know that? The description. That means it's pure is, heart when oh, he makes man. music. It's pure like feeling and true emotion, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, Luther, Mary, Stevie. Yo, this man changed my life when I heard his music and you know, I hope nobody gets mad at me for saying his name because I understand that he might not be the greatest person. But um, R. Kelly, brother, mm -hmm. art just musically. I mean, There's he no taught. He yeah. Me. He taught. He taught me. You know, just music when I when I listen to his music. Um, and number one, baby, Usher Raymond. Oof. Usher top Raymond, of the top. Baby. Usher Raymond, baby. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I can't lie to y'all. Watch this. See, I don't <laughs> mind. Yeah. yeah, I don't mind. We don't, we don't mind, Usher. We don't mind, Usher. Up the top. Uh, Pants uh. on that pole. Baby, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. Mind. Did you say hallelujah as you were writing this? Oh, man. If you're no. working till three. <laughs> long as you leaving with me. Yep. <laughs> Gonna get that money, 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 money. that money, 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 money. Come on, give me some. Cause I know how it is. Yeah, you know how Gonna it is. Go handle your business your penis, and man. make that money, 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 money. Go ahead and put something in the offering plate. <laughs> Girl, I don't mind. <sighs> oh, I don't mind. Yeah. Oh, you wrote that for me. Man, I, you know, I have a great, you know, quick, great, great story about that song because I was in the studio, me me and Luke was in the studio um, with Katy Perry. Katy Perry was coming to work with us. Yeah. And Katy Perry went to do vocal warm-ups. Mm -hmm. And so while Katy Perry was doing vocal warm-ups, Luke was playing this thing on his guitar. And I started saying, I don't mind. And it was super lovey and romantic. And Luke was like, no, I can't do that. The beat is already pretty. We need edge. I said, well, what the fuck you want me to say? Like, I don't mind, like, I love a stripper. It's like, you tripping, bro. Like, yeah, I, you know, out of frustration because yeah. I had been trying. He said, yeah, I want you to say that. What? Yeah. 
And I was just fascinated with Atlanta culture. And I was like, yo, all of this Atlanta shit they doing is pop. And I said, yo, we need, you know, this sh we need to take all of these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nobody ain't really was doing that. Da -da 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 you know, but yeah. outside of the Migos, nobody yeah. had put it in a pop song, yeah. you know. And I just was like, yo, let's do it like this. And we did it and um, sent it to Usher. And, and, oh, yeah, I remember Katy Perry walking in and <clears throat> heard a song and was like, that's an Usher song? And we hadn't said who we did it for. We just did it. We was like, yeah, that's crazy. We, we was going to send it to him. She was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to hear him sing that. And I was wow. like, wow. And, you know, so so Usher did it. And I, I ain't going to lie to you. That, that's, that's, that's one of my favorites that I did with him because I did a couple with him. What did I do? We did No Limit together. We did that together. No Limit too. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. I'm really good, Jay Ballantyne. You are, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you, are. you know what? <laughs> you, are. you are. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As Harold Lilly would say, you're welcome. You know, but this, you know what? Though? It's just one thing, man, because you, you keep you, you this name. Okay. He's popped up a few times. Dr. Luke. Uh huh. Yeah. This is my camera, right, guys? Yes. yes. Uh, Dr. Luke. Mm -hmm, mm hmm. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> you still owe me five hundred dollars. Oh man, I don't want the money. I just want to be able to say you owe me five hundred dollars <laughs> forever. Oh my! Because you got plenty five hundred dollars. Oh plenty man, Mug got plenty, plenty five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Oh man, you owe me five hundred. Five hundred, Luke. Five hundred, Luke. We back. Next, All right, we back. Here we go. We back. I don't even need to sing it. Top five R and B songs. Dang, that's a hard, hard one. Oh man, I think I know what my number one is for sure. Um, but top five R and B songs. Who? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Overjoyed, mm. I've been building my castle mm -hmm. of love. Come on, man. Come yeah, on, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Y'all can't, y'all can't. Ain't gonna really... get no argument. Ain't gonna get no argument. He's, he's, he's so. He made complicated things seem so simple. Oh man, hmm. oh, and that's man. from a mu from a musician standpoint. Like he made the most complicated movements and key changes, or like scale manipulation. He made it digestible to everyday people yeah i don't know how he did yeah. that yeah yeah keep going i gotta say this song bro i gotta say this song it's a neo soul song but i'm gonna put it in this because mm. girl i know this might seem strange. kept me from going number now one let me <laughs> know if i'm out of order that is the most player shit i've ever heard in my life that yeah. man if now he was spitting I played that song for my son. I said, listen to me. When you approach a woman, this is exactly how you talk. This is what you say. This is the sincerity that you got to have. And and I remember driving in the car and my son just smiling like we had a moment. I was like, it was from that song. It was from that song. He get on my nerves you got too. You got yeah, music, you got man. And I had the opportunity to work with him. He's one of the best. Monster. Incredible. Monster. Um... I'll be your groupie, baby, mm. cause you are my superstar. Mm. I'm your number one fan. Give me your autograph. I hate Pooh Bear forever for that one. Sheesh. Cause he's incredible. He's the best. I hate Pooh Bear for <laughs> turning the air conditioner up everywhere he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you hop in the car with Pooh Bear, it's gonna feel like it's. Two degrees in that. Thank you for letting me know. I'm Caribbean. I can't do yeah. the cold. Poo I like warm. And Pooh Bear, it's not my birthday, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So, happy so, birthday. so no, this is real talk. That that song right there. Um, oh, I've been doing my own things. Mm. Love has always Come had on. a way of having bad timing. Shout out to my nigga Bryce Wilson. Okay, groove thing. And and guess what? I never knew I could sing. I started out as a rapper and doing like dance all reggae, you know. And then it was one song that we performed live for the first time and I just knew the words and I just felt to sing it. And this this song is the reason why, this is the first time I ever felt like okay, I could do melody. My love 
Do you ever dream of candy coated raindrops? Yeah. You're the same, my candy rain. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah. look, yeah. It, and by the way, to anybody who's like, that should, listen, bro, every song that I mentioned had a very special moment in my life Absolutely. that I can remember. And it, and it did something that shift, shift the moment for me. So, I picked those five. To be honest, it's too many to mention. I, I feel like I'm doing a disjustice. There's a bunch of songs that I probably am forgetting, but. I yeah. think I'm gonna go. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm comfortable with what it's I just said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look at them as jams. We're not there. We're oh. Not there. Let's go. We're not there. We're gonna make a Voltron. Okay. We're gonna make. We're gonna make your R and B artists. Okay. Okay. We're gonna build him. Ah, uh, it's a from he. the vocal, performance style, styling, <sighs> and passion. We're building okay. your Voltron. What artists are you grabbing? the vocals from who gonna sing all them great songs you write mm -hmm. we're gonna do it I'm gonna say Usher I'm gonna go with Usher mm. I'm gonna go with Usher I'm gonna go with Usher man I gotta go with Usher bro I know I have to because it's not that he can't sing it's not that there's nothing he make everything sound good and that's the biggest problem he'll make a bad song sound great and it'll be like hold on hold on after listening to it on the 12th yeah. song, this song yeah. was strange. But, but, he also, but you're incredible. He also, yeah. he also owns it, though. No, no, no. He's the best. He you know, owns it. Okay, what's next? That's okay. the voice. Right. It's right. Usher's voice. Get the voice. Performance style. Chris Brown. Wow. Chris fast. Brown. Come on, come on, come on. You're fast. Chris Brown. What else you got? I knew it was Chris Shit. Brown. Guess what? The next answer, guess what? It's probably Chris Brown again. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> what else you got, Tank? The styling of the artist. Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Bad motherfucker, man. I think Bad that motherfucker man. exudes cool. I he think does. that man exudes cool. I think yeah. that man wakes Chris Brown and dye his head red, dye his hair purple. I've never, Chris Brown tries things that nobody on earth can get away with but Chris Brown. The only thing Chris Brown ain't did yet is dreads. Yeah. And if Chris Brown do dreads and dreads look fire on Chris Brown, I personally want to fight him in a cage match one on one. Cause at this point cause at this point I feel like it's just too much. It's the, you're it's just too doing much. too much, my nigga. Like you gotta relax. Like to up. Come on, bro. Stop, man. Okay. Who are you getting the passion from? The heart of the artist. The heart and the passion. The heart and the passion. Damn, bro. Chris Brown, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Monster. Come on, man. Yeah. Talking about who, somebody who didn't been through it all. Come on, all. man. At some point, we are gonna gotta stop playing with like this stop. nigga. Yo, bro. This nigga has been incredible for years and been one of the best and been in your top five, top two, number one, number one this, number one dancer, all with both his hands tied behind his back. Talk about it. I ain't never seen nothing like him. Speak on. Talk about I've it. never seen nothing like him. I've ne Listen, my brother, I don't know if you see this, if you're going to see this. Guess what? I haven't spoke to this man. We didn't text before this. You you know my favorite R&B artist is Usher. But I don't know what it is with that dude, bro. That dude, that dude was touched, bro. By, by God. For sure. Like with his eyes closed. I never seen nothing like it, man. Yo, this man paints like paints. Yeah. Like, bro, I got a painting that he gave me in in my house, and I'm like, yo. he does everything. Why? Well, he acts, he sings. <clears throat> this nigga can backflip into a nene. Did y'all know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I didn't think that's where it was going. Maybe like backflipping to the pool or something. No. He can backflip did to, you, it to it. Did y'all know it. that though? No. Uh, he yes. is incredible. He's different. And, oh, man. and I just feel like he's a he's a human being that deserves like all his flowers because I really personally believe that by the time that everybody on this planet starts to give him his flowers. He may not be here to see him give it to him. Mm. And 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 I want to tell him, 
listen, my kids, bro, that man is incredible. Yes. You know? You know? And he said happy birthday to my son, too. So it's like, he going to have a special place. Listen, you do something for my baby. Nah, he a good dude, too. Yeah. He a good dude, you too. You unbeatable. Yeah. Right. I'll help you fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you, and they'll be like, well, we all, what are you doing? Why yeah. are you jumping well, you in? You more chill. We're going to have to go get Timothy. Oh, uh, bro. <laughs> you know, I call my brother the incredible Hulk, bro. My brother is, yo, we that's, go, yo. And guess Timothy, what's so man. funny? If you meet us, people think I am the aggressive one, and he is the calm one. And it is the, listen to me, yeah. my brother is like, T-Run, when I see this man, right, I turn it, it on and on. Nah, Tim Timothy, nah, 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 just cool out, cool out. I gonna talk to him, mean, my brother favorite thing, mean and not fuck my boy. That's how he gonna talk to him? No, my brother, he, it means like, I'm not with that. So like, if somebody say, yo, mean and not fuck, like, yo, I'm not trying to hear what you're telling me right now. When I see this, and he's like. Nah, nah, nah. Yo, bro, it's all love. Let me just talk to him. I, I, he may not even understand. t run. Mean and I fuck my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, got this segment of the show, brother. Mm -hmm. What's it called? It's called I Ain't Saying No Names. Don't say no names. I ain't no names. Don't say. I ain't saying no names. Don't say. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. No names. No names. No names. None. So, you tell us a story. Funny or fucked up. Okay. Or funny and fucked up. Okay. All at the same damn time. Okay. You know what I mean? Because that's the song you was listening to when your manager told your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Baby, these people don't need you. Yeah, yeah. shut the yeah. same up damn and make the music. Yes. You know what I mean? So you tell us that story, man, about, you know, your, your, in your travels of this music business, yeah. man. Yeah. And the only rule, mm -hmm. you cannot say the names of the people in this story. I'm not saying anybody's name. I'm going to tell you. Can I say the name of the song? Go on here, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, okay. So right now, mm -hmm. this is T Ron, T Ron, Rock City, Rock City, Virgin Islands. Mm. I ain't saying no names. Okay, cool. I ain't saying no names, but I will say we was um, we was in the state of Los Angeles at a studio. Okay, saying no name in the studio, and um, it was a song that we wrote, and it was a song called Mrs. Glass. That's the name of the song. It wasn't big or it did not, you know what I'm saying? And um, the person that ended up having this song ain't the person that this is about. And a couple of people tried this song, so it could be anybody. But on this particular day, we're at the studio and the artist is supposed to be coming in and they're like, hey, the artist is going to come in. But just to give you guys a head up, heads up, the artist would like to change a couple of things, personalize it for themselves. Oh, man, we're all, oh, we're all for that. That's good. Yeah. It, it might even be better. Person came in um, with a guitarist. And a personal assistant, and a bottle of Hennessy and a bottle of wine. Okay. It was like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? We, we gotta be prepared. We vibing. And um, the 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 person who was engineering just so happened to be the person that made the beat, and and we're like, and and me who I I say I'm the Chick Fil A of the music business because I'm in the service business. I like mm -hmm. I like to give good service. So I said, hey, today is about you. However you want to do it, whatever makes you comfortable. I've been told you had your reservations about singing the song. This is no, this is a no pressure zone. Let's get it to a place that'll make you feel comfortable. Yeah. Oh man, thank you so much. That was so nice. <laughs> so now time is going to buy. The Hennessy is going down. Yeah. And the, you know, and the Hennessy is gone. And now there's a glass of wine poured. And I was like, I don't think I saw anybody else. I didn't have none, and he didn't have none, and they didn't have none. Yeah. Drank all this goddamn you know what I'm saying? Minding my business, name of my company, minding our business also. And I go and I come in and I said, Okay, it's taking the lines. He's like, Yo, bro, when we going to record the song? I'm like, Oh, my bad. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Hey, we ready. We ready. You know, guitarist already laid the electrical guitar part. We ready for you to cut. And then the artist looks at me and then whispers into the person next to them's ear. And the person next to them said, the artist, so-and-so feels like the song doesn't personally speak to their heart. 
Y'all all in the same room together, though. Oh, bro, we this close. So I see. <laughs> whenever I get offended, I talk in my accent, you know, because I don't. So, so now I'm talking very like, you know. Man, y'all niggas fucking with me, man. Why? You... Hey, look. So look. So this is what I'm thinking. We start with the hook, see how you feel with it, and then we go from there. This this song doesn't match. So and so says to tell you that this song doesn't match their chi. <laughs> the chi. Ah, nigga. You fucking with me right now? This a joke? <laughs> no. You mean to tell me this person, bro? Literally, we this close. So you mean to tell me this person right here next to you is telling you to tell me? <laughs> no man, you ah fucking with me. This gotta be a joke. Cause we were joke. I was just talking to you. <laughs> Whisper again. <laughs> <laughs> so and so say. No, no, no. So and so ain't say fucking nothing. That's so and so done. I walk out. I gone to my. I gone to my people. I say, hey, I know what. Pan ain't they doing right now? What? You lying. You lying. Trust me. Watch this. Y'all gotta come see this. Come back. They was already gone. So, so we like, they leave? Yeah. The girl say that she said to say that she ain't feeling it. I wait. So she didn't even say bye. She tell the po- I done. <laughs> I went home. <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> I was mad all night. And I've never worked with that person ever again in my life. Wow. True story, baby. Ah, this music bitch, man. <laughs> I was just talking to you. I was just talking to you. Just talking to you. It's never that serious, bro. It's never. The vibe is not that serious. It's never. Some people get lost in the vibe. This man. is what I this is how I'm supposed to act. Man. Don't do that, young artist. Old artist, any artist. Don't do that. Why why? I don't know. It was it was very it was very you know what? At the point, at the moment, I was upset and I felt disrespected. And now, it's one of my favorite stories that I like That's to tell. That's a great fucking story. Like, it's one of my favorite stories that I like to tell when people come to my house. You know, especially when, especially if somebody says the artist's name in my house, I'd be like, ooh, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I can't wait to tell you this story. What? H- Hennessy and Wine already told me Yo, this was going. Yo, bro. Here we go back. Yeah. Hennessy and, and wine. And bro, at that point in time, I had never drank. I didn't. I, I never. I hadn't tried alcohol in my life till I was thirty-two years old. Oh wow! So I never drank. So you watching that like? Oh, yeah, shit. I was like, you know, you know. My dad used to drink, so I was used to be turned over about it, and I was be afraid of what kind of like, you know, yeah, you know, alcoholic I would be or like be like that. So I used to be scared. But then I I, I went on vacation with um a good friend of mine, and she was like. Ron, how can you, you know, and my wife and my friend, and we all was together. And she was like, hey, why, why are you going to say you don't like something you've never tried? And every day she was like, let's try this drink, try this drink. And then I found things. I was like, oh, this is cool. And this is cool. And then so now, you know, you know, I have shots with the crew. and be like, hey, salute. We, you know, celebrating yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. That's a great story, bro. The whisper is just. I gotta try that one day. Just no, oh, try no. that dumb ass shit, want, man. I just want to try just to see. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not rolling. Maybe gonna... you can make it a TikTok, and then if it's a prank, and you tell. <laughs> now, if it's a prank, and yeah. you're like, "We prank. just fucking with we, you," yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a fire prank. Yeah, yeah. But bro, dead serious. What I mean, and I'm like standing. Oh, they sitting in a chair like that in a couch and I'm standing up looking down and they ain't getting up every time I talk and I'm not talking to her I'm talking to this one and when I talk to her she will whisper in her ear and then she will talk to me yeah I ain't talking to this, no, this nigga no more I'm, yeah. so I was like that's what, she, that's what she's saying but I was just talking to you <laughs> <laughs> no it wasn't me it wasn't me somebody else it wasn't me yeah it wasn't me you were talking to somebody. Oh no, she pulled a shaggy on me oh, fast. Right. Oh. That's great. I'm sorry, you have listen, man. Oh, no, it was inc- it's incredible, man. Yeah, so 
Th- those experiences are great. Oh, they're yeah. great. They're yeah. great to have. And, and especially early in your career to yeah. be like, okay, cool. Okay, this is something that happens. Okay, I'm prepared. Yeah, in real so life. There's some yeah. wild niggas in this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, it. That's all. I mean, you got, the, you got the clear the hallway niggas. Oh, uh, my God. You got the... You know what I'm saying? Don't look the, me in my eyes. Don't look me in my eyes, oh, yeah. people. Don't oh, look yeah. me in my eyes. You can't look me in the eyes. You can't do me none of them thing. Yeah. For me, it's like, you can't do me none of them thing. I'll, person, I'll just go home. It's not that serious for me. And and you know what? Like, again, my dad was incredible. I ain't never, there's only one famous person that I've ever been like, whoa, to meet. Jay-Z, baby. Yeah. That was my favorite artist. Why? He's the only rapper that ever said St. Thomas in his raps. What up to my Miami and St. Thomas connects. Hmm. And I was like. You was locked in. Bro, locked I told in. you as a little boy, I thought y'all didn't know he existed. And right. he did. And I loved him. Yeah. That's so, dope. so again, I wanted to meet Jay-Z. So my Jay-Z story, I mean, oh my God. I have so many stories, but let me tell y'all my Jay-Z story. <laughs> God, let me tell y'all my Jay-Z story. So I want to tell y'all my Jay-Z story because I go to uh, Coachella. Me and Usher go to Coachella to see Beyonce, right? And we go there and we're backstage and I'm like, yo, this is fire. We're having a good time. And now it's like at the end. And everybody's back there and I want to meet Jay-Z, but I don't want to be lame or like, but all I want to say to Jay-Z is like, hey, I'm T-Ron and I'm from St. Thomas. Yeah. Because I just want to say, oh, cool. And that's it. That's That's it. it. But I just, but. Bro, he with his wife, his family's back there. Yeah. I d- you don't know how to get in. And you guess know how what? To get in. I'm not like this with nobody else. Yeah. Anybody else, I'd be like, hey, what's up, brother? I'm yeah. T-Ron. You know, but I'm like, man, I really love Jay-Z. I'm a big Jay-Z fan. And everybody kept introducing me to Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> what? what the- no, what I'm what dead serious. So they was like, hey, Tyler Perry, man, this is T-Ron, man. He's an awesome songwriter. And be like, oh, man, nice to meet you, man. Fan, watch all your movies. Awesome, bro. Walk away. Come back around, they like, oh man, Tyler. He's like, yeah, I just met him third time, yo. And it's like, yo, everybody must really want us to meet, huh? I'm like, I guess so. What's up, T. Ron, Tyler, <laughs> bam, right. cool. Um, a good friend of mine, Tim, and he, w- I would be forever grateful for this because he didn't know how much it meant to me. Mm-hmm. He still probably doesn't. And I was like, he was like. <laughs> <laughs> I go up to Tim. Tim is like, yeah, you know, we talking. He's like, yo, T, you met Tyler Perry? I'm de- <laughs> bro, bro, I say, w- maybe I should be in movies. I don't know. Right. That's just so crazy. And then I was like, he says, I say, um, nah, but very humble, very shy. I'm not even shy. I was like, man, but I really want to meet like Jay-Z though. You never met Jay? Nah, nigga, I ain't never met Jay, man. I want to meet him. Oh, man, it's nothing. Got you. So he take me over there. Hey, Jay-Z, man, it's Teron, man. He wrote songs, da 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 Oh, man, that's dope. Yeah, man. Nice to meet you, dog. Yeah, he from St. Thomas. Ah, dope. My old stomping ground. That's all I wanted, That's, baby. All, you wanted. That's all I wanted, man. Yeah. That was that was yeah. the highlight. Yeah. Yo, and Beyonce was incredible. The show was the best show. One of the best shows I've ever seen That's live. Yeah. Like that yeah. show in particular. But the whole time, I just was like, if I could just. That's dope. So, so this yeah. Tim. Is it Tim Witherspoon? Yeah. Of course. Listen, yeah. that is my partner. And That's, that's my why brother. I, listen, that's my dog. And so the story makes even more sense because he's such a cool dude. Man, he's amazing. Such a good person. Listen, brother. I, listen. It was, it, it, Salute, it, it, my brother. Thank you so much, Tim. That meant a lot to me. That was like some That was like some childhood, you know, because the first time I met Jay-Z, um, he had on a pair of Nikes that me and my friends called the Jay-Zs because we didn't know what they were called. And so I used to bag groceries at the grocery store, so we always saving up money to buy them, and I never could buy them. And then as I got successful, guess what? Nike brought them back, and I bought two pairs. I barely wear the motherfuckers, but I'm just like, my wife is like, when are you going to give these away? I said, the Jay-Z's will never leave this closet. Right. <laughs> the, Jay-Z's, <laughs> yeah. the, the Jay-Z's are a fixture. They will never. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you don't understand. That's that's my eighth grade self in that closet. Yeah. And it just means oh, something to me. Yeah. And and so I met him. I remember meeting him as a little boy and being like, "Yo, my boy, you got feature me on a voice." I was a little. Fu- Listen, I'm a little ghetto ass, hood ass, bad ass little boy. You know what I mean? So when I meet him, I know he was like, "Who the fuck is this kid? And why is he so hyper?" And you know, and I just was like. That's not how he don't remember me, but in my mind, I don't that can't be the only encounter that I have with Jay Z. Yeah, yeah. Jay Z gotta meet me, I gotta and I up. gotta be like, "What's up?" I'm yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that that yeah. that's what it was, and it meant it meant a lot to me, and I appreciated Tim for that. And I was like, "That shit was that shit was fire." So that's my Jay Z story. Wow, that's great. Um, listen, man, you know we appreciate you. You man, know we love no, you. Thank you y'all. Are, I love y'all too. You know we. And your Instagram page is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get your fresh haircut. Oh man, yo man, it's so it's it's so funny, man. I can't wait to get back to get a cut before before I go to London. And and my barber, that's my guy. Shout out to my barber Monty because you know when you meet a barber, oh, yeah, meeting yeah, the right yeah, barber yeah. is like meeting a wife. Yeah, absolutely. And guess what? So yeah. I met my barber. I used to live in Kennesaw, which is like fifty minutes from where I live now. So just so y'all know, I drive 50 minutes to the barbershop yeah. to cut my hair. Yeah. And it's like, why you don't have him come to the house? To me, the whole experience of being there and away. In the shop. In the shop. Yeah. And he closes the shop for me. Yeah. I just, it's just something about it that <laughs> I enjoy. And then he cuts my hair. And I remember the first time I did it, I did it just being silly and I got so many messages. I was like, oh, people think this is funny. I was like, well, I'll do this all day because I really believe this. I really feel this way when I get a haircut, you know? When my hair starts to grow out, I got to humble myself. I'm like, you know, I might be out with y'all and, you know, we out and all the girl, I'll be like, hey, you know, nice to meet you. I get a haircut. I'd be like, what's up? Y'all niggas don't know I'm here? Yeah, yeah. It's me, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, baby. T-Ron is here, baby. Good you looking is in the building. How you, how you wanna handle it? You know what's happening. You know how I stepped in. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? And you know I've been in Atlanta too long, so every now and again, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All that shit got you know what I'm saying? You know what the fuck going on, Shotty? You know what I'm saying? Shotty, you know what I'm saying? Yo, 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 straight up, like straight up, you know how a nigga look like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nigga just turns into T.I. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey bro. I love Tip, man. Yeah. I love Tip. Tip is the guy. The I guy. love Tip. He, you know, one of my early songs with Usher was with Tip. And Tip didn't really know who I was, but he, you know, he probably don't even remember. Everybody meets so many people. He knows who I am now, but then he just embraced us and allowed us to come That's in and write is, a song. Yeah. And we got a yeah. and we got a song on his album. It's called My Life Your Entertainment. And we mm-hmm. and we did a chorus mm-hmm. with Usher. And I just like those were the moments that kind of, you know, so. Yo, people don't realize why it pays to be nice to people because I, I'm the type of person where I remember the things you did for me, the nice things and the good things, and when you were good to me, and be like, bruh, I fought with you forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. I always fought with you. I always thought that were cool because I've always felt like an outsider. I've always been the guy that been like, yo, I'm from St. Thomas, and I'm kind of awkward. I really don't know how to move. I don't want to be so, bruh, when I'm in L.A., bro, I be in my hotel. I be in the mo- I go to the movies. Like I went to the movies the other night. I go to the studio and I go back to the hotel. Well, come fuck with us, man. Yeah, man, man. I would come love on, to. Man. Come fuck with you us. You know, man. I would- <laughs> it's, it's, it's where we at. Yeah, I would love to, come man. Come fuck with us, man. I would love to. And we man. appreciate you pulling up. No, for thank real, you. Real, thank man. you for having nah, me. This big, shit was incredible. It's a big me. time pull up, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't we don't take it for granted. Oh man. You know what I'm saying? And we we tap in when we see each other and it's always love. Um, but yeah, you've been trying to get flowers, you and your bro. wife to move to Atlanta for a long time. No, 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 no. I know. I mean, shit ain't going to happen. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to, now, now I've set my sights on, on on South Florida. Oh, okay. Avoid that state tax. It's still the South. I yeah. say, I take yeah. it. Yeah, so you know I'm, I'm saying? I'm, you know, I'm working on her. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm, I'm saying? I'm California. I just yeah, heard yeah, you. You want to stay in California? Yeah, yeah, I ain't leaving. I just got a Puerto Rico plug. You're from the Bay, though. Yeah, yeah. So I'm never leaving California. I got a Puerto Rico plug that I just, you know, we'll talk about that. St. Thomas might be a place, too, man. We'll see what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make it do what it do. <laughs> but you high level, bro, and, and we give you your flowers, bro, and we celebrate you, bro, and 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 when you win, brother, we dance. It's Thank a win you. for all of us. No, that's how we look at it. I that's appreciate how that. We look at it. Thank you. you. Know what I'm saying and you're 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 one of our elite. Thank you, you know so what I'm much. So yeah, nigga, keep going. God willing, baby, Please. keep going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Write me one. I'm yeah, just gonna hey, throw that I, out there. Hey, no, I would I would love it. You got to write me one, and you got to write him one because um, we the first manager artists. 
artist to manager. Artist manager <laughs> to, yeah. You know what we doing. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the RB Money Podcast, the authority yes, on all things R and B. Yeah, yeah. And tonight we have had a special man in the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we wanted with, them, with that real pen. With that <laughs> real pen. Uh, really pimped his pen. Really on pimped his pen. Michigan night. Listen, man, from from the shack to to the to the sky not even being the limit for to real. beyond man good work man thank you T Ron in the building y'all thanks so much